multiple doses of drugs for patients who want to quicken their deaths. Brown wrote in a signing message, in the end, I was left to reflect on what I would want in the face of my own death. I do not know what I would do if I were dying in prolonged and excruciating pain. I am certain, however, that it would be a comfort to be able to consider the options afforded by this bill, and I would not deny that right to others. The Los Angeles Times reported that the California law is based on one in Oregon, where more than 100 people ended their lives last year with the help of a physician. The law makes assisted suicide legal for patients who are not reasonably expected to survive beyond six months. The controversial legislation has drawn support and opposition from all sides. The Catholic Church has opposed it, while Right to Die advocates have favored it. Brown said he weighed both sides before making the final decision to sign it. The law, though, is not set to take effect until sometime next year. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports missing cargo ship El Faro, hit by powerful Hurricane Joaquin, is believed to have sunk off the Bahamas and one presumed crew member is confirmed dead. The search continues for at least 32 other people, most of them Americans, who were aboard the ship when it vanished in what maritime experts are calling the worst cargo shipping disaster involving a U.S. flagged vessel since 1983. Coast Guard Captain Mark Fedor told reporters, we're assuming the vessel has sunk. He added that the search and rescue teams were no longer looking for the ship, which sent a distress call early on Thursday after getting caught in Joaquin's ferocious winds and waves as high as 50 feet. He acknowledged that those aboard faced steep odds against survival, but officials later said that three Coast Guard cutters would stay in the general area where the ship was believed to have gone down to continue searching through Monday night. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Following morning reports indicating that Philadelphia High School for the Performing Arts student Samantha Bylum deals with really weird social pressures on a daily basis, Onion reporters met with the 16-year-old dance student who described feeling regularly alienated from her peers for extremely bizarre reasons. If you're not up to date on the latest Urban Street Art or Esperanza Spalding albums, the other students will eat you alive. It can get pretty brutal. Just the other day, everyone cut class to go watch the Million Dollar Quartet musical at the Forest Theater, but nobody told me. Now I'm the only one that hasn't seen Lance Guest's rendition of Folsom Prison Blues. It's humiliating. According to Bylum, the school year shows no sign of letting up as she continues dealing with the everyday stresses of auditioning for the school's production of My Fair Lady, keeping up with the latest punk Afrofusion dance groups, and not having enough fishnet sleeves to wear throughout the week. Honestly, I don't know how the other students deal with it. Keep checking TheOnion.com for more as this story develops. This is The Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, and you can join us. We'll give you our toll-free number and the Skype username to which you can connect to get on the airwaves and talk about stuff. With you in the studio tonight, you got me, Ian. And Conan, the Libertarian. And Conan, you and I are in a little bit of a competition here tonight. The, uh, you know, it's not anything too many people care about, but uh, Keene, New Hampshire is having its municipal primary mm -hmm. today, and we happen to be doing the show from and live in uh, the municipality known as Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, and you and I are both running for at-large council seats. This is true. A whole bunch of us decided to, not when I say us, I mean people in the community, uh, decided to run. It's usually yep. not that many. There's not much participation. There's much, much apathy. People just don't care. This time around, something's, something's different. You think Some, so? I, I think that, well, when I read the all the all the candidates who are, who are in the primary had their questionnaires... Uh, uh, printed in mm -hmm. the local paper here, and I was expecting to see a lot of you know freedom people, li liberty-minded people 
but I, not really. Why I, were you I, expecting to see a lot of liberty-minded people running in a uh, city council race? I mean, this is Keene, New Hampshire. It's like the, the far left town in, in New Hampshire, literally and also I was being optimistic, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I read the questionnaires, I realized, nope. It's the same. It's the same yeah. bunch of, of of fools, yahoos that usually run, and they they have an agenda, and they will get their agenda accomplished by using government to do it for them. Uh, this this is you know this is stuff they don't want to do on their own. They don't want to raise the they don't want to start a charity on their own right. and raise the money to do these. No, they want to get into government and use taxpayers' money to fund the projects that they care about. Well, that's what they've been taught to do. I mean, that's what people are raised on the idea of well you know they, they do this in school with the uh, with elementary school students if you could be a legislator what would the law be that you would pass mm-hmm. kids nobody ever asked the kids hey what law would you repeal right and, and i think they just did they actually get that accomplished here in new hampshire where that's that was the question they asked the high school kids or the middle school kids or whatever but did someone change to where if you could it, what what is the dumbest law that New Hampshire has passed recently? They did that. Yeah, that was actually started by a Free State Project participant who uh, is a Seacoast State rep. Yeah, that's uh, more, Max that's Abramson. that's more like it. I mean, instead of I mean, the book is Sadly, growing. Sadly, though, he he didn't get very many entries. Oh, yeah. Well, well told- yeah, because because the law book is growing and it's it's complicated and it, you got you have to go to school for for eight years to understand you know what's actually going on. Um, how about getting rid of some of the laws? I mean, we need simple laws. Right. I mean, look at the laws of voluntarism. Uh, you know, do unto your unto your fellow man as you would have do unto you, and uh, you know, and all voluntary interactions are the way to go. And that's pretty much it. Don't hurt don't hurt your buddy. Don't hurt your neighbor. And that's you know that's to me that's the goal of uh, running a political campaign. Now, uh, I did not put any f- effort into my campaign beyond filling out the questionnaire from from the local newspaper. Mm-hmm. You have actually put signs up around town. Uh, so you're putting more effort into it. So I hope that you uh, you beat me uh, this time around. We'll we'll see. Uh, my I've only run a couple of times. Every time my number my pers- uh, goes up, the numbers go up. Right, so we, it's, we can so, talk more so, about so it. it's about it's all about name recognition. So I've only been here for three years. Right. So we'll you know I'm on uh, my now coming up on uh, I'm into my tenth year. I guess in I'm over nine years at this mm-hmm. point. Not quite ten. Uh, Joe is with us in Alabama. You can call in about anything, and that's what Joe has done here tonight. Joe, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Conan. Good evening. Uh, I noticed on your um, free king uh, site that Daryl and uh, James won an award from ACLU. Not, in Alabama, not entirely accurate, but go ahead. I'll, I'll correct you in a moment. Go ahead with your, okay. your question. But the ACLU in Alabama has always had a bad – the news makes it out like they're bad folks. Can you shed some light on how they help people? Oh, Sure. Uh, so just to clarify, though, I was uh, Daryl and I, uh, Daryl is our uh, Thursday night co-host and myself and James Cleveland, who is uh, also known as Robin Hood here in, in town. He's another Free State Project early mover. We were all invited to an awards dinner. That does not mean that we were receiving the awards for the evening. But for me, it was oh, an okay. honor. It was an honor to just be invited. You know, that to me was an acknowledgement that, you know, we've been a part of something that has been happening here with the ACLU uh, in New Hampshire. Now, I can't speak for the ACLU of Alabama or any, I mean, I can't speak for the ACLU of New Hampshire, but I have experience with the ACLU of New Hampshire, and I see them time in and time out at various different uh, hearings at the state house testifying in favor of more freedom, testifying in favor of stopping the encroachment of government onto various different liberties from everything from increasing the power uh, and the scope of the police over our lives to ending uh, the insane war on drugs or the, the war on marijuana, for instance. They're great on on those issues. They're big proponents of free speech. The ACLU of Massachusetts actually took up my case. They're proponents of the freedom of the press. Uh, they took up my case in Massachusetts where I was arrested for recording video in a town hall. They won and uh, got a settlement out of that town for $5,000 in that case. And there's just case after case after case. They do a lot of legal work. You know, the ACLU, their main thing that they do is uh, when people are being oppressed, they will take their case. They will take it pro bono because a lot of people who are being oppressed are the people who cannot afford to, to pay for an attorney. This is true. And they have a lot of attorneys that are not, they're not on staff of the ACLU. The ACLU in New Hampshire only has one attorney on staff, their, their head attorney. Every other attorney that works for the ACLU is just sort of like a, 
uh, a donor attorney, if you will. They uh, they donate their time to the ACLU. They take on a, a certain number of cases every year for them. And ultimately, if they can get a payout from the state, then they'll take a cut of, uh, of the payout. But they are working as uh, as pro bono uh, attorneys. A question in Alabama: Who are you receiving the uh, the bad news from? What what organization is saying the ACLU is probably Fox Radio and uh, uh, Rush Limbaugh and whatnot? Yeah, uh, the big thing here they fought for the Ten Commandments in the uh, the courthouse here, and then also they uh, fought for it or against it. I guess that they had them remove it. Yeah, and they should have done that. Uh, I mean, that's the right, right thing to do from the separation of church and state perspective. Otherwise, if you allow the Ten Commandments, you have to allow the Church of Satan to come in and put up their Baphomet statue. Right. Well, that's why in Alabama, because, uh, you know, it's a Southern Baptist-type place, and so, you know, of course, they want their state so saying it's not interfering with church and state, but in a way it is. But that's the reason, you know, being a... a, a more of a religious type state that they put a bad name on somebody that's just trying to make it a level playing field. Yeah, and I think that's another difference between a lot of southern states. I'm from the south originally, as are you, Conan, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, New England. Even though people in New England are religious, uh, there's, I think, a little less of uh, organized religion here. It's not quite as popular, and the people who are religious seem to be more interested in kind of keeping it to themselves uh, than than maybe down in the Bible Belt. Yeah, they're... Uh, well, uh, pol- by yourself. You know, it's between you and the Lord, our Heavenly Father. It's not my neighbor. I mean, of course, we want to try and influence our neighbor to some degree, but it's a personal thing. And if they see something in you that they want to ask you about, that's what religion's all about. It's not a push. It's like, let's share. I totally agree, Joe. Anything else I can clarify for you tonight? Yeah, one other thing. Uh, Daryl W. Perry wrote a book on uh, uh, um, uh, The Rebel, and in there is stated about the schools. Y'all talked about that earlier. And if they did more uh, private school, they do a better education for less money than the government. Mm-hmm. And that's just statistics that people do better if things were privatized. Yeah, but all they but their their defense every time is what about the poor kids? Who's gonna Who's gonna teach the poor kids because they won't be able to afford private education? And, I don't believe and, it. And, and I don't believe it either. They're standing. Well, of course, the first thing that will happen when everything is privatized is the tuition will will go, go through down. the floor. But already, Conan, there's a private school in the town next door to Keene, uh, Westmoreland. Mm-hmm. That, I understand it that charges fifteen hundred dollars a year. And there's one in Swansea as well. I mean, yeah. it's it, they. So it's you, already cheap. You have yeah, you have proof right across the uh, the river there, and you know. But no, it's, it's you got, we have to support and so, or so protect the poor kids. Otherwise, oh. they're going to be on the streets. It's ridiculous. Doing what they do. It's a ridiculous claim. I mean, look, if people care, I think the fact that people are concerned about that shows that they care about the poor and they want to help. So, what great. It's, but as long as you say, as long as you don't say it's charity, yeah. because it's not, because you're taking the money from me. And I didn't agree. What I don't agree. The voucher, uh, they, they talked about that a little bit in Alabama about doing a voucher system yeah. for charter schools. There's yeah, it's actually, a little bit better. There's actually an interesting development in New Hampshire about that. I've been meaning to blog it. I haven't gotten to it yet, but it's on my Croy- short list. Croydon? Croydon. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a town in, in New Hampshire called Croydon where there's a Free State Project participant, an early mover who's on the school board there. They have started to basically give vouchers for private schools, and the state of New Hampshire is now suing the Croydon School Board over that. So that is in effect right now. Thank you, Joe, for the call tonight. If you want to learn more about the Free State Project, I suggest you go to freestateproject.org. We can talk about the latest on the Silk Road case, Ross Ulbricht, and the the unsealed transcript, what that means. Going back to the MyVeg and saying, you cost me a lot of misery, and all total, $2,700 in doggy fees, and all it took was one container of Dynavite, two pounds, three ounces, and my dog has been cured. Abby's a five-year-old Silky Terrier. She had, like, chicken pox on her belly, clusters of bumps on her back, and she was allergic to like 70 some odd things. So the dermatologist, it was like, oh yeah, just keep giving her needles every 10 days. But she's not clearing up. And then I, it came up on my radio, Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. And I was like, oh, that's it, that's it. I give her the Dynavite after five weeks. And one morning there was nothing there. And I'm like, oh my God, she's all clear. There wasn't one blemish on her body. Her fur is beautiful. She is totally happy. She is a healthy, bump-free, pimple-free, shiny, silky. It turned our lives around. So thank you very much for Dynavite. I couldn't be happier. Dynavite's the bomb. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 
Did you know that select musical tones have the power to heal? By listening to seven amazing songs that contain these tones, you can experience the power of music therapy. I used to work in a pretty stressful atmosphere, but I started using the whole tones in the office, and I'm experiencing more focus, motivation, peace, and better relationships. WholeTones99.com is a unique music therapy program featuring seven secret ancient healing frequencies uncovered in the music of King David. Now you too can unlock the healing secrets of the Bible as we are offering a free sample of this music so that you can discover their power to heal, relieve stress, and break negative cycles. I use the tone to calm my five, three, and two-year-old to stop the fighting, and it works. Now you can experience the healing music therapy in the comfort of your own home or office. Visit WholeTones99 com and get a free song. Visit W-H-O-L-E Tones 99.com today for your free song. That's Whole Tones 99.com. Whole Tones 99.com. Don't worry about things you can't control. Isn't that what they always say? But it's about impossible to avoid worrying about what's going on these days. The government has used the war on guns, the war on drugs, and the war on terrorism to tear our Bill of Rights to shreds. But you can fight back. The Tenth Amendment Center has proven it, racking up major victories. For example, when the U.S. government claimed authority in the NDAA to have the military kidnap and detain Americans without trial, the nullifiers got a law passed in California, declaring the state's refusal to ever participate in any such thing. Their latest project is offnow.org, nullifying the National Security Agency. They've already gotten model legislation introduced in California, Arizona, Oklahoma, Missouri, and Kansas, meant to limit the power of the NSA to spy on Americans in those states. We'd be fools to wait around for the U.S. Congress or courts to roll back Big Brother. Our best chance is nullification and interposition on the state level. Go to offnow.org, print out that model legislation, and get to work nullifying the NSA. The hero Edward Snowden has risked everything to give us this chance. Let's take it. Offnow.org. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free, at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logo apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com FTL and include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. Yeah, it's Free Talk Live, and you can join us here on the Radio Waves toll-free at 855-450-FREE, that's 855-450-3733. Uh, you can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username tonight is lrn.fm. It is campaign uh, evening here, or campaign night, whatever. I guess the eve is the day before. Yeah, we're waiting for the polls. Mr. Daryl, who loves this kind of stuff, is uh, uh, happily awaiting the results at City Hall. He'll be yep. coming in here any, any second now, and he'll be... Not because any of our listeners care who wins uh, the <laughs> at-large council race, uh, but we're in the race. You and I, Conan, are in the the same race. So we're, we're we're both libertarian leaning, and it's a five it's, seats. it's a big thing when uh, you know the freedom types run for office. Because you know what, at the end of the day, I I don't really want to run for Me office neither. because <laughs> I don't want to because because well, I don't want to take office. If I don't want by some miracle I actually won, I don't think I could even take the office, Conan. I couldn't swear that oath. I know. I've looked at it and I'm I'm thinking I would have I would lie. I might really? ask him to, I might ask him to take cross your fingers behind your back. Exactly. I might ask him to take the God thing out. I can go as a Quaker or Amish or whoever someone gets uh Is God in there? I haven't even I, I don't pay attention to that part. I I, I uh, you know the really the part that really bothers me about the oath, oath of office is swearing allegiance to the United States of America and the state of New Hampshire. Yeah. I, oh it's, and it's not just the constitution, it's the actual state. The state. Yeah. It's I'd have to lie. Yeah. But I would and I would do it, but you know I I'm not running to make decisions for other people. 
You know, I'm not trying to, I'm not that guy because I believe that the only people out there capable of making decisions for themselves are themselves. You radical. I mean, I don't want your money. I don't want to make decisions for you. I don't want to, you know, I want you to, I want you to keep it all and make you your own decisions. You just want to end, pu- you just want to end public education. You hate schools. Well, the, the public schools in our area is what's killing us the most. It's more than the city, twice as much as you the city. You hate kids. I, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, at the end of the day, I am running for office in Mm self-defense, not not because I want to protect you, not because because I, you know, government needs to be smaller, it needs to be the taxes need to be lowered, and and the small and the smallest form of government is is the best form of government, and I believe in you know at the end of the day, I've said that three times now, I can zero. The the day has ended. (laughs) But I mean, but but I mean, but you can't do things without. Well, yeah, well, it depends on how you define government. Ian, you and I in this room, we're a, you know we're a government. It's not it's not coercive. So mm-hmm. I mean, if I am tired of your shenanigans, I can walk out the that's door. That's true. You but, are governing uh, yourself. But, but we are this is and that's the kind of government that I like. I mean, we come together. We we have ideas. We can talk. We can do things and make decisions together. And if we don't like something that the other guy is doing, we can we can opt out. You know, uh, th- you mentioned earlier that there are a lot of candidates that are running this year, an unusual number. I think the largest amount I've ever seen uh, running in a, in a primary here in, in Arkeen, New Hampshire. 16 of them in just our race, the race for five seats. Uh, they will whittle that 16 down to 10 tonight uh, with this primary. And then the final 10 will run for the general election of which five will uh, will be elected. So I'm hoping that you can make it through, make the cut through. At least the, to the, the primary, primary so I can get some of those radio station uh, interviews that they weren't handing out because there were so many candidates. Yeah, they couldn't interview everyone because there were just too many of them. Um, and, and so, you know, you look at the the field of candidates, you got two people from Freekeen. So you and I are Freekeen.com bloggers. Mm-hmm. There's also two people from Stop Freekeen who are running uh, in, in the race. And then, you know, there's a couple of few incumbents. Uh, and then there's some other other names who get who get put types. at the very top of the list, which is crap. Yeah, like, that was a weird thing today. The it was actually just one incumbent who was at the top of the list, and then everybody else was in alphabetical well, order. Well, one of them was from was, another ward, I think. And yeah. the one incumbent was actually from something an large, screwy something screwy. Uh, but anyway, that aside, the the, the minutia aside, some would say Conan that you guys in Keene, you've poisoned the well. You failed. Look, the fact that you have an opposition movement that's running candidates against you in the city council, that's proof that you failed. I say it's proof that we are ruffling feathers. Uh, we're, uh, well, yeah, it's proof that we're ruffling feathers. The question is, is it a good or a bad thing? And uh, we well, we talk about this all the time. I mean, whatever we do, I mean, there is only one There is only one thing that I've seen Free Keen do that has actually gotten uh, recognition, good recognition, and that was Daryl Perry's... Uh, uh, mayoral debate that he put on it was it was very well received everything else we do whether it's holding signs on the road or it's doing uh civil diffs uh, you know at the in central square smoking pot or something or mm-hmm. what well, just know, depends or, who you or, ask. or writing a letter to the editor i mean you know all those things are not received well i guarantee you could find somebody who didn't like what daryl put together because daryl was in charge of it or because daryl was asking libertarian but if you questions. asked him if they actually watched it you know all right so you all right so you you don't like what happened did you watch it no, not really. I'm not going to mm. watch anything you guys do. Right. Well, I mean, you know, everyone else who we've had problems with, who watched it, you know, overwhelmingly couldn't find anything to say. Hey, there's nothing. It was it was professional. It was well done. It he was it was unbiased. Uh, you know, what are you going to complain about? Yeah, I'm interested in seeing too tonight if uh, you know how many more people this turns out because the speculation of the local paper was that the fact that there are so many different so many candidates in this municipal primary election was going to encourage more people to come out and vote. Mm-hmm. And you know, municipal elections period are very poor voter turnouts generally. I mean, anywhere you go in in the United States, I think that's a general statement. Maybe there are some areas where they're more popular than others, but. Certainly in Arkeen, New Hampshire, it's usually no more than like 10% of people going to, let's say, the general election. It's probably more like 3% or something in the, in the primary. Very, very low turnout. Um, but I, I've got the previous uh, year's municipal election numbers, and so I want to get the numbers from tonight. And we'll see if having, you know, let's say two times the normal amount of candidates uh, has actually turned out. Yeah, I, they're going to bring people. their buddies out. I mean, if you ever if if you'd ever done the music scene at like college uh bars and and clubs you know the only people who really come to those events are the friends are the, the friends and the families of the band and it's going to be the same thing and if you have 
two if you have two bands on the stage, you're gonna have less audience. If you have yep. five bands, you're gonna have a much bigger audience. I think it's gonna be sense. the same uh, in this uh, scenario, uh, simply because there are a lot more candidates bringing their buddies to the uh, to the table. I think it'll be a good thing for maybe not you because you've got name recognition. And I'm working on mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's gonna be good for me because uh, I bullet voted myself. Oh, nice. Um, having a having a huge uh, spread. I think would it makes it makes it harder on some candidates. Whereas in my case, I think it's going to actually work in my benefit. Now, mm. may, maybe not so much in the general election, but the primary, I think I'm going to get in. I, I don't know. I who knows? Uh, <laughs> you got to try it though. I mean, you got to throw it up against the wall and see if it sticks. And so you and I have, you know, we've done a couple of different types of campaigns here. You're running a more active campaign with actually putting signs out around the city. It's you know key uh, strategic traffic points. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just basically doing any kind of media that comes my way, which has only been the the, the newspaper questionnaire, which they also sent to you uh, as well. And so it'll be interesting to see, although I've been here for three times as long as you, so it'll be interesting to see who gets more votes uh, here when the when the numbers come in tonight. And we will let you know, uh, dear listeners, if any if either of us move on to uh, to the general election and then the extra media that comes because of that. And for me, that's what the purpose of the campaign is, is to get the ideas of liberty out there. Uh, and that's why I, you know, I'm so disappointed by somebody like a Rand Paul, for instance, who isn't really a libertarian, but yet all these libertarians are giving him all this time and this money and this he's, effort. He's the lesser evil. That's right. And that's where really what it boils but down to. To me, it's not worth supporting a lesser evil. I've got a limited amount of time, a limited amount of money. And evil is evil. I that's mean, right. You know, it might be a lesser shade. But I'd rather still... spend my time and money promoting local liberty-oriented candidates, true candidates who actually care about freedom, because that's where we can make a difference. You're not going to make a difference on the national stage. Just pour in all the millions of dollars you want. $1 million in New Hampshire for all the liberty candidates would be an amazing windfall. Right. It's Free Talk Live. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without Berkey System. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? They found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. BlakeDevelopment.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media. Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-SITE-123. 
DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here on the radio waves, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I want to let you know how to save big time on Amazon, I have done this now, I think 25 orders I've placed over the last 10 months at saveitpurse.com. You go to saveitpurse.com and you can get almost anything you want from Amazon. You know, anything that's got like the free Super Saver shipping or Amazon Prime, whatever ships directly from Amazon, I think pretty much qualifies uh, to be purchased through saveitpurse.com. And when you do that, you'll save on average in the United States 20%. Now, Mark just, uh, his son got a Lego set at 45% off. I got a Blu-ray recently at 40% off. Uh, another couple of orders, I had to get something quickly, so I ordered it at 20% off. It came fast. Uh, that, you know, it's easy to get 20% off because that's the average. The stuff that's like 30 or 40%, you might have to wait uh, several hours to a couple few days. But if you're patient, you can get some incredible discounts through saveitpurse.com. The catch is you have to use Bitcoin. So if you don't yet have Bitcoin, then this could be a reason for you to get some Bitcoin, considering you can save 20, 25, 30, 35, whatever percent off uh, that you can get in the marketplace over at saveitpurse.com. It's, uh, it works very, very well. The maximum discount is 50% off, uh, which I've never gotten the 50%. I have gotten 40, Mark got 45, so it's it's possible to uh, do some amazing discounts through save at purse.com. And when you enter through save at purse.com, free talk live. Uh, we'll get a very small portion of your purchase price. And I should say, when you go to saveitpurse.com and sign up, after that, you can go to their regular site URL, and we'll still get the very small amount of credit. So thank you in advance for doing that. Save at purse.com. Ian and Conan in the studio here tonight. Uh, we'll give you some of the results. They're already starting to come in. Uh, me versus Conan in the uh, city council race. It looks like we're probably not going to make the cut, Conan, uh, but uh, one of us. One of us will end this night with more votes than the other. <laughs> Who will it be? Uh, so you can you can share your thoughts here at 855-450-FREE. And then I think there's an important lesson that will come out of this for some of our listeners out there who might be considering making a move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. But we'll come back around to that because uh, there's other important news in the world, specifically the latest from the Ross Ulbricht case. Now, Conan, uh, have you followed the Ross Ulbricht case at all or in any way closely? I knew that they threw out some of the defendants or, you know, who were actually uh, some of the witnesses, the witnesses that have been thrown out. And yet the case still stands, you know, as it was. Uh, no, I don't follow a whole lot of it. It, uh, you know, I, I leave that to you and Daryl. I know that uh, he, I feel I feel for the man. Ross Ulbricht is the creator of the Silk Road. He is now in federal prison, sentenced to life in prison with no parole possibility. Uh, so he's there for, for good, unless he can get an appeal to successfully overturn his conviction. And I think he should be able to do this, considering the uh, DEA agent and Secret Service agents, uh, there's two of them, 
one in front, one from each department, who have pled guilty now to basically being totally corrupt, uh, using their positions in this case to milk bitcoins from the Silk Road site that were supposed to be confiscated by the federal government. They took about eight hundred thousand dollars worth of bitcoins, if I'm recalling correctly. Uh, so these guys are super corrupt. They were behind the scenes on the Silk Road. One of them had administrative access and was using that access basically to blackmail the operators of the site, including Ross Ulbricht. There's just all kinds of underhanded, awful behavior on the part of these federal agents that has come out since Ross's conviction. So hopefully that's going to help him overturn this case. But what's being shared now over at motherboard.vice.com's Carrie Paul is the contributor there, and I believe she was the one who was on one of the reporters on the scene during the trial. She uh, writes about a new unsealed transcript from Ross Ulbricht's sentencing. Uh, and so there's you know new details coming out in the case here. Nearly an hour, for nearly an hour before sentencing, Silk Road mastermind Ross Ulbricht to life in prison, Judge Catherine Forrest made a sweeping defense of the U.S. drug laws, exhaustively rebuking the idea the online drug market resulted in any harm reduction and countering its supposed libertarian mission, according to a newly unsealed document. She said before sentencing Ross on May 29th of this year, quote, What Silk Road really was was a social market expander of a socially harmful drug that we have deemed in our democratic process to be unacceptable, and it was an enabler of those trying so very hard to get away from it. Mm, mm. <laughs> Ulbricht's defense had argued the site reduced harm because it uh, kept drug deals off the streets and allowed users to share information about drug safety. The transcript from the final day of court proceedings shows how Forrest categorically rejected that claim, outlining the social costs of drug use from an individual level to a mass scale. She said in her statement, quote, The social costs of drugs are manifest. The user is only one part of the equation. That is where much of this harm reduction argument comes from, and it is focused on the user. I'm going to interrupt here. here. Isn't that the most important part of the equation? If we're looking at the war on drugs, the purported purpose of the war on drugs is to stop drugs, right? To purportedly stop people from getting hurt, high. From hurting themselves. Well, not all these drugs are going to hurt you, right? Like, I mean, there's, for instance, marijuana has never been proven to kill anybody. Or, or hurting the people around you. Yeah, but uh, people who still defend marijuana laws are going to say that that guy could get in a car and have a car accident and kill some kids. Or he could beat his kids, or he could kick his dog, or he could do a number of things. Have you ever known a marijuana user to do any of those? Well, things? that's why the whole marijuana argument is ridiculous. Yeah. But I mean, there are drugs that people, including alcohol, uh, alcohol, which is completely legal, right? Which uh, you know upset lots of people, which will drive them into a frenzy, which will you know there's no there's no there's a number of things that someone on alcohol uh, could do. To damage themselves or their family, or absolutely. So, but of course, that's not on the that's not on the table. But uh, thank goodness, because people learn their lesson about alcohol, but yet they won't apply the same lessons to all of these other drugs. And I'm sure Forrest, the the judge here, is not going to make the argument that alcohol should be added to the Schedule One uh, narcotics list. But she's acting like, uh, you know, that there's. She says this is the user is one part of a massive, massive worldwide scheme of drug trafficking. And if you sat where I sat, you would see that the user is not the end. So harm reduction fo focused on the user is missing the point. Well, I totally disagree with what this lady is saying. Harm reduction is about reducing the harm to the user. It's nice that the Silk Road also reduces the harm to the dealers because mm -hmm. many of the dealers are also just innocent people who just want to provide a product and a you know to people who want to buy it but ultimately if the concern about drugs is that they could hurt people if the concern about you know heroin is that it could lead to people dying for instance and it does frequently then shouldn't the user be the number one concern shouldn't helping those people be the number one goal of the supposed war on drugs well that and that's why they believe that eliminating the drug period will fix the problem. So, I mean, so, all right, there's a heroin problem. People kill themselves. They love doing it, and they die sometimes. Uh, I know. Let's get rid of heroin, and then the problem will be fixed. Poof. Right, right, Ian? Just make it illegal, and it'll go away. And, uh, of course, it, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't work. Uh, and it's the same thing that happened with alcohol prohibition. It did not get rid of it. It just made it, uh, Just to, it just sent it underground. And of course, you you have instances where you, you know the government was actually, um, you know, 
where alcohol was be actually they were uh, not paint thinner. What what was it? What, uh, the industrial type alcohol uh, was still legal. So oh, that was so yeah, that yeah, was yeah. still floating around in the market, and people were drinking that crap. Isopropyl alcohol, yeah, and they were, and, and, yeah, and, they were and they were dying from it. So right. I mean, actually. Uh, moving it underground like it did was was actually killing probably more people. Exactly, and 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 certainly you know the Silk Road isn't solving every problem with the war on drugs, but there's no doubt that someone getting a drug from the Silk Road or any of these other underground markets, because remember remember the Silk Road was shut down in 2013. It was actually October of 2013 when they took down the Silk Road. Silk Road 2.0 came out. Other competitors uh, came out. Silk Road 2 has since been taken down. Other competitors have either gone offline or been taken down. But there's still more than a dozen of them out there, and they're active, and there's thousands of drugs for sale. So they haven't stopped any of the drug sales. Mm -mm. Um, They haven't reduced the harm-reducing effect of these underground marketplaces. But ultimately, the problem, one of the problems with drugs like heroin is the impurities. Uh, and the, the 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 I guess the variance between batches. So uh, one batch may be very very potent, and then the next batch from the same dealer might not be as potent. And so you know then the following batch is ten times as potent. If the person then puts the same amount of heroin up there uh, in their veins, then they might get a 10x dose than what they were expecting. And there's your overdose. Yep. Uh, our toll free number tonight is 855 450 free. Has this ever happened to you? You're applying for some type of a loan whether online or in person, when it's time to hit submit, your nerves spike because you're not sure you'll get the approval you seek. There's a different way to approach life. It's called Credit Success Secrets Revealed. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is a revolutionized step-by-step system that you can follow to get all the credit you desire today. We're talking about secured and unsecured credit, car leases, credit cards, and cash. Call 800-568-8960. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works no matter what your current situation, whether you've had bad credit, never had credit, or looking for some business credit, or any type of credit, Please call 800-568-8960. We don't take any personal information. Your personal information is way too valuable to trust to a third-party email or a website that doesn't answer the phone. At Credit Success Secrets Revealed, we show you step-by-step what to place into the financial computer systems that control your credibility in the marketplace today. We practically fill out the forms for you. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works 100% of the time. Call now, 800-568-8960. That's 800-568-8960. 800-568-8960. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Before using Heart and Body Extract, my energy level was very, very low. I could only walk a few feet and then would have to sit down. I was tired and lethargic. But after taking Heart and Body Extract, my energy level has improved greatly, and I can now walk longer distances without getting tired so fast. Thank you, Heart and Body Extract. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. So the protection of life, liberty, and property is is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a freer, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's it's only getting bigger. That's amazing. To be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. Gold, silver, and Bitcoin are all higher. But I saw former Fed Chairman Bernanke opened his book tour saying more Wall Street executives should have gone to jail in the 2008 crisis. Was there even one? No. Hey Ben, isn't accessory after the fact also a crime? Isn't it time to rethink your investment strategy? Robertson Roberts Brokerage, 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us on the radio here, 855-450-FREE. We're sharing with you... Some of the now unsealed comments from Judge Catherine Forrest. This is the lady, and I almost hesitate to call her that. This is the woman Mm, who mm, mm. sentenced Ross Ulbricht to life in prison. She could have given him as, I think, little as 30 years or 20 years. Not that that's little. I forget what the amount was, but it was a few decades was the minimum that he was facing. Uh, But she wanted to send a message. To all those other underground internet drug marketers. That's right. And uh, she did she did that exactly. Uh, how was this information unsealed? Is, um, is there a certain amount of time after the case goes by? I don't or? know. I'm not familiar enough with the federal court system, Conan, to really be able to give you an answer to that question. I'm not sure. But if you know the answer to Conan's question, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Coming up, you can join Mark, our very own Mark Edge, who is actually on a fire call tonight. Is that what the ah, fire department doing uh, his job? Trace Mayer, Stephanie Murphy, Paul Pui, Joseph on Perling, Bitcoin Bell, Stephen Michaels, Tone Vase, and more at the upcoming Bitcoin Investor Conference. We're now like three weeks away from this thing. It's October 29th through the 30th. Uh, that's going to be happening at the D Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. The D Hotel, by the way, takes Bitcoin. So, of course, it's the obvious hotel to hold the Bitcoin Investor Conference, the very first ever Bitcoin Investor Conference. You're going to want to go to this thing if you are in the Bitcoin world, you want to meet the movers and the shakers, the other Bitcoin investor types, this is the place to be. Your tickets are available right now. Go to BitcoinInvestor.com. And again, that's October 29th and 30th. It's BitcoinInvestor.com. We were sharing with you the comments from this judge, this evil, evil woman, who is justifying continuing the insane war on drugs and ignoring the fact that the Silk Road, this underground drug marketplace, the first of its kind, you know, there have been many others since, and there are several right now that are online doing plenty of brisk business. Uh, but the, the first of its kind online drug marketplace, they're, they sold other things like fake IDs, uh, hacking tools, some pornography, I think. But ultimately, drugs were the real main market segment for these underground marketplaces and still are but the fact that what you had with the silk road is basically think of like an ebay or an amazon or something for for drugs where the sellers have ratings you know if somebody rips you off you give them a bad rating if they're providing a good product in a speedy kind of service then they get a good rating and so you can look at the ratings of the sellers And you don't want to deal with somebody who's got questionable ratings. So even though the sellers on the Silk Road and the buyers were anonymous, the the fact that they still had a reputation attached to their anonymous account was enough to keep most of them honest. And that's not to say that you couldn't get scammed on the Silk Road. There were ways that could happen. Yeah, this is basically the free market and how it's supposed to be run. You are doing it. You're in business for your customer. That's right. And if you rip your customer off or you give them some bad some bad stuff, uh, you're going to, well, both parties are going to suffer the consequences, but you're probably not going to be doing business again. And if you do plan on staying in business, you've got a lot of recovery to do. And that's the way it should be. I mean, there's no there's no bailouts. Uh, there's no there's no seconds. I mean, you if when you screw up, you've got to live with the consequences. And this is basically how the Silk Road was working in a lot of these other sites. And that's a good thing. Yeah. So I mean you're you're so it's so it's black market, but it is a controlled free market black market where you know your your ratings follow you and that's good. It uh, yeah the it's really a great system. I mean even though again you're anonymous, you still have a reputation. In fact, when the Silk Road shut down the first time, 
uh, and the second Silk Road came online, a lot of the same vendors came over from the first one, and they were able to sort of reclaim their old account names. Mm -hmm. There was a way that they could prove that they were the original account holder, basically using PGP signatures and encryption. Right, right. Uh, and so if they could prove that they had the old account names, they would be able to reclaim those old names. And same thing with you know the other sites. These same vendors want to keep their reputation from all the old sites, so they keep going under the same anonymous names. And so the anonymity and the competition that co came out of that means that when someone were to order something on the Silk Road, it's almost almost a guarantee. It's almost something you can count on that it's actually going to be as advertised. It's going to be the drug that it's advertised as. It's going to be the amount of the drug that it's advertised as, if not more so. And it's probably going to be a good price because there's other That's guys right. out there doing selling the same stuff, and now you've got competition. So you're not just worried about some dude in an alley and that your your buddy in high school told you, hey, you know, there's this guy. Go check him out. There are some shifty alleyway yeah. <laughs> parking lot drug deals out there, and this takes all of that out of it. Uh, and, and it also takes out the fact that the guy in the alleyway could be an undercover cop as well. Yes, uh, exactly. So there's more, you know, the fact that the buyers aren't known to the sellers. Of course, I guess that could happen, well, it might happen one time on the Silk Road, and all it takes is, hey, I right. just got nabbed by a narc. Uh, he's totally sold me some stuff, and now he, now I've, they're at my door. Uh, that so, might not be enough to sink an account, but it would certainly be, uh, you know, a bad mark, a black right. mark on their account. Because, uh, you know, the buyer could be making that up, right? So you don't know who's necessarily telling the truth in those cases. But the fact that, the you know, there's competition means that you're more likely to get the drug that you ordered. And that's where the overdoses come from. That's where the problems in the black market tend to come from. You know, when you look at, uh, for, first of all, when you look at the legal market, prescription medications... There are more people that die from properly prescribed prescription medications in this country than there are from all of the illegal drugs deaths combined. Okay, so to put it in perspective, even with the regular black market, it's the legal market drugs that are actually killing more people. And as far as opioids, we know in this area, a lot of them get hooked on prescription drugs, and prescription then opioids, and then they get heroin. And then they, they lose their prescription. And well, uh, it's it's you know much much something. cheaper, much much cheaper to just buy it off the street, and then they, of course they you know, and it's a, and it's a horrible horrible thing. And I don't you know this that's there are drugs out there that you kids just need to not touch because they're they're not, they're not good for yeah, you. Yeah, heroin not so good. Not so no. good. I mean, stick with the yeah. stick with natural stuff that you can you know just kind of stuff that you can pick out of the out of the garden. Let's go to your calls and thoughts here. Tom is in New Hampshire. We'll get more I've got more quotes from this judge here in a moment. Tom, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Conan. Yeah, what would you think of a child who is uh yelling and screaming uh because she doesn't get her way and she's furious and she uh picks up a knife and points it at her stepfather? Uh, that sounds bad. It's uh, anybody who would point a knife at anybody is b bad. Unless it's in self-defense, and this does not sound like self-defense. It sounds like someone's throwing it's a tantrum. It's what I just did is what I call the uh, the possessive adjective fallacy. All I said about it was her way and said nothing about it. If her stepfather is trying to rape her... And she's doing all this and uh, points a knife at him. Then, of course, that's justified. Uh, see, yeah. what you get in discussions and arguments is your way. You didn't get your way, but nobody ever says the merits of the argument behind it. Or like uh, when the abolitionists were talking about what about, uh, you know, instead of waiting until the compromise of 1820 and then struggling for 30 years trying to reason with all these crazy people, and then we're, all we're going to get is the compromise of 1850, how about we just start killing slave drivers? And the uh, people were, you know, you're talking about killing people just to promote your political agenda? No, no, not just our political agenda the correct political agenda, you know, the totally dismissing all of the lines of reasoning. Well, maybe you feel slavery is unjust. No, not we. They totally dismiss all of the arguments in favor of it because they are on the, lose, the side that is wrong, the side that is not supported by good, sound, logical reasoning. So when they are confronted with good, sound, logical reasoning or any uh, demands or uh, they always just slap a possessive adjective on it as if that's a way of discrediting what somebody's uh, saying or doing. 
Thanks, Tom, for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I don't know. Any comments on that, Conan? I, it was hard to follow. Uh, there's a lot of lot of ideas out there. I you know, I think that as far as immoral ideas that are floating around there, they they some like for example, uh, right now, uh, my big argument here in the area and in the country is taxation. Taxation, in my opinion, is immoral. Oh yeah, they're taking money from me, and uh, you know, I I believe that it makes us all slaves to ourselves. I guess there is some there slaves might be, to yourselves. What do you mean? Well, we're we're we are voting for more things. Not me. You know, well, I, I, I don't, of course, but the people, my neighbors, mm-hmm. uh, they use government and, and politics but how many of as justification to get more things Do they, though? from ourselves. It seems like most of our neighbors don't bother to vote. I mean, I was out in front of a, uh, I was out in front of the rec center today here in Keene, mm-hmm. and it's interesting there because you've got parents who are coming to pick their kids up from the rec center, and I'm out there and doing exit polling, asking people if they got time to take a one question exit poll. And there's a lot of people who are like, yeah, I didn't vote. Yeah, it takes like it takes less than five minutes. They but were there. They, they would pick their kids up and they would <laughs> yeah. just drive off. Now, to be fair, some of them vote in other locations, but nonetheless, it's Free Talk Live, 855 450 free. As a pioneer of the e commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more. When the most powerful and destructive witch in 13th century France chooses a successor, her frightened young protege, Liana, escapes into the wild. Pursued by witch hunters, the town watch, and her mistress, Liana's only hope is a pair of newly returned crusaders, one with PTSD, the other a complete rascal. The Witch's Hand by Wendy Joseph is a cut above the usual sword and sorcery fair. Available now at your favorite booksellers or visit wendyjosephwrites.com. CopLock has quickly become the top police accountability group in the United States, and maybe even the world. With chapters across the globe, there's probably a group near you that you can join. If not, you can start your own. Besides joining a local CopLock group, you can also give just $1 a month to the CopLock network. Your contribution helps support the efforts of those who make CopLock possible. So please join the CopLock network now at coplock.lrn.fm. That's coplock.lrn.fm. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, October 6, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.71 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,139 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $244. Antiwar.com reports another day of intense fighting was reported in the central Mari province of Yemen on Monday as pro-Saudi forces attacked Shiite Houthi territory, aiming to open up a route into the capital city of Sana'a. At least 55 fighters on both sides were killed and another 100 were wounded. The results of the fighting were, as is so often the case, a matter of dispute between the two factions, with the pro-Saudi side claiming mass surrenders by Houthis and small territorial gains, while the Houthis 
denied this and reported repelling the attack and killing dozens of mercenaries. The pro-Saudi side in this fight includes tribal factions along with Saudi and United Arab Emirate ground troops, while the Houthis are backed by the remnants of the Yemen military. The two sides have been fighting over Marib for weeks despite repeated predictions from Saudi officials that the province and the rest of the country would be liberated in short order. The Houthis have controlled Sana'a for over a year and six months into the Saudi war, their control only extends from Aden along the southern coast. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula has capitalized on the war as well, seizing Mukalla and some of the nearby areas. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports California Governor Jerry Brown on Monday said he had signed legislation to make it legal for terminally ill patients to end their lives with the assistance of a physician. In Brown signing the law, California became the fifth state to permit assisted suicide. Specifically, the law releases physicians from liability for prescribing lethal doses of drugs for patients who want to quicken their deaths. Brown wrote in a signing message, In the end, I was left to reflect on what I would want in the face of my own death. I do not know what I would do if I were dying in prolonged and excruciating pain. I am certain, however, that it would be a comfort to be able to consider the options afforded by this bill, and I would not deny that right to others. The Los Angeles Times reported that the California law is based on one in Oregon, where more than 100 people ended their lives last year with the help of a physician. The law makes assisted suicide legal for patients who are not reasonably expected to survive beyond six months. The controversial legislation has drawn support and and opposition from all sides. The Catholic Church has opposed it while Right to Die advocates have favored it. Brown said he weighed both sides before making the final decision to sign it. The law, though, is not set to take effect until sometime next year. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports missing cargo ship El Faro, hit by powerful Hurricane Joaquin, is believed to have sunk off the Bahamas and one presumed crew member is confirmed dead. The search continues for at least 32 other people, most of them Americans, who were aboard the ship when it vanished in what maritime experts are calling the worst cargo shipping disaster involving a U.S. flagged vessel since 1983. Coast Guard Captain Mark Fedor told reporters, we're assuming the vessel has sunk. He added that the search and rescue teams were no longer looking for the ship, which sent a distress call early on Thursday after getting caught in Joaquin's ferocious winds and waves as high as 50 feet. He acknowledged that those aboard faced steep odds against survival, but officials later said that three Coast Guard cutters would stay in the general area where the ship was believed to have gone down to continue searching through Monday night. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Zoo visitors watch the mating rituals of the ice cream shop staff, and a serious co-worker puts on headphones to focus on his sandwich. Happiness is perpetually fleeting, so try to savor the next few minutes before it disappears once again. This is The Onion Week in Review. FBI officials announced they just can't bring themselves to bust a man who recently downloaded every season of the 1990s television show Picket Fences from a BitTorrent website. While stressing that pirating copyrighted material is strictly illegal, federal authorities expressed their sympathy for the man and claimed that perhaps the story of Sheriff Jimmy Brock and the strange events in a small Wisconsin town is all he has left to cling to. We have more than enough evidence to bust him for piracy, but if the poor guy really wants to watch all four seasons of a 20-year-old CBS drama that nobody remembers, He's clearly going through a pretty big rough patch right now. Frankly, 
we don't need to make it any worse. For statistical purposes, we have seized all private data from your personal computer and we are disgusted with your recent internet search history. You sick f For more, keep checking theonion.com. This is Free Talk Live, and you can join us here on the radio waves. The toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We have tonight comments from the judge in the Silk Road case. Judge Catherine Forrest uh, is her name, and she apparently the, the sentencing statements that she made had been sealed for some reason. Uh, until now, they are now available. And Carrie Paul over at the motherboard.vice.com has a few highlights or lowlights, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, she's commenting on the Silk Road, claiming that it did not have the harm reduction effect that the defense claimed that it did. And, of course, I firmly disagree with her assessment in this case. And you're welcome to share your thoughts with us here. The toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. Also, Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. She says in her statements here... The social costs of drugs are manifest. The user is only one part of the equation, uh, one part of a massive worldwide scheme of drug trafficking. And if you sat where I sat, she says, you would see that the user is not the end. Well, what is the end in that case? Because the user is generally considered the end because they're the end of the line for the chain of the product, right? There's the grower, the manufacturer, the wholesalers, the people that pass it along, pass the product from one person to another, you know, all the middlemen, if you will. And then there's the end of the line, the street dealer and the user. The user is absolutely the end. So I don't know what she's talking about. We'll go on with her points. Unless though. she means the children of the user and the neighbors of the user and society I in see general. What you're saying. Uh, that's she, that's she may be going in that direction. I'm not sure. She says so. Harm reduction fo focused on the user is missing the point. Now, Forrest, according to Vice.com, resented the fact that Ulbricht was challenging U.S. laws regarding drug sales and distribution, saying that quote there is a way to change the law, but it is not by doing what occurred. Yeah. So 30 years later, Ian, we might get something passed. We might. Yeah, 30 years later, we might have marijuana decriminalized. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, how long has it been? How long have they been working on that? They so thought it was going to happen in the 70s. Well, it, it's it, it didn't happen so quickly. Yeah. So yeah, uh, hey, if Ian, if if you if something bothers you about the law, I mean, you need to run for office Ugh. and uh, or or go go Facebook your legislators and have them, you know, get start working on. I that. do all that stuff, man. I mean, I, and, I go, and exactly, and yeah. we know how how it, how it works. It doesn't. It takes forever. Uh, and so Ross was able to create the Silk Road, this underground drug marketplace that is available on or was available on the the Tor network stands for the onion router you can go download the tor browser and play around on tor and visit some of these underground sites and see exactly what they're like for yourself it's not illegal to go to these sites you can go to them you can search them you can look through them it's just not legal to order uh through them anyway she goes on with her statements she says that there is a way to change the law etc no drug dealer she says from the bronx selling meth or heroin or crack has ever made these kind of arguments to the court she says it's a privileged argument. It is an argument from one of privilege. You are no better a person than any other drug dealer, and your education does not give you a special place of privilege in our criminal justice system. It makes it less explicable why you did what you did. Hey, boy, you went through the education system, so you should have known better that you shouldn't be selling drugs or allowing other people to sell drugs. Because ultimately what Ross Ulbricht did was he wrote a program now, it's true that in the beginning, allegedly, he was selling mushrooms through the site, so he did actually try his hand at some drug sales, mm -hmm. but ultimately, Ross Ulbricht created a website. He created a site that people could go onto, and they could buy, and they could sell almost whatever it is that they wanted to. There were a few uh, product categories that were prohibited on the Silk Road that some of the other markets don't prohibit, uh, but pretty much it was an open, free marketplace. And so she says, you should have known better. You've been through our education system, which is supposed to beat into your head obedience. That's what the education system in this country is supposed to do. How could you have come out of that and still have been so independent? How dare you, sir? You are being sentenced to life in prison. Mm. She goes on uh, and she says uh, she denounced the ideals of the Silk Road, saying Ulbricht's creation of the site implied that he thought he was above the law. 
an idea that is troubling and terribly misguided and also very dangerous. I don't know what would give someone the impression he thought he was above the law. Someone who thinks they're above the law acts that way. They don't hide. You know, if you think you're above the law, you can flaunt the law and act like you're above the law. You can just, you know, throw it out there that you don't care about the law because you're above it and you don't expect anyone to do anything about it. If you're truly believing that you're above the law, if you are hiding yourself under a, a username, in this case, the Dread Pirate Roberts, an anonymous username, hiding on an anonymous black market that is on a, an anonymized system that makes it very, very difficult to trace anything, I would say that by that suggests that he knew that he was not above the law. Yeah, but I no, I do believe that he believes that way, that he's above the law, or that the law is wrong, or that it's bad, and that he needs to do what he needs to do. But, but the he, term but above he, the law. But suggests- he was also, but he's also fearful of the consequences, and those still exist. So he was trying to s- stay alive. I, okay, I see where you're coming from. You're saying that uh, that when you when you're saying above the law, you're you're saying that he believed that he was better than the law, meaning that the law is is unworthy of us. Mm-hmm. That the law is a is a terrible law, and I agree with that. I, I well, I. I've broken the law before. Sure. Who but hasn't? I don't I don't get on Facebook that evening and say, "Hey get, guys, guess what I did this today? Guess how many laws I broke today?" I'm not going to do right, that. Because and, you know they're going to come after you. Correct. And I think that he was in the same boat. I do believe he was he felt that he was above the law. Otherwise, he wouldn't have done any of the, what he did. I wouldn't do the things that I do. Uh, uh okay. That's not my understanding of the term above the law, but you know, maybe you're right about that. Now now yeah, well, he's not hurting people. Or, That's true. Or according to the judge, he is, but he didn't believe that he was hurting people. Now, if he was, I know, if he, if there were actually victims involved, maybe he's a mobster dude and he's out there, he's punching some dude in the face, and he's like, "You didn't pay your your rent this this week," uh, you know, he could go to jail for that. But he doesn't care because he's above the law. So, I mean, there's, you know, there's different. Uh, there's, right. Someone who's above the law is someone who behaves as though they can't be they can't be caught. Correct. So I no I, I yeah so I guess there's different levels. I so, do believe that Ulbrick be, be, believed that he was above the law, but he was being careful at the same time because not he, careful enough. Not careful enough, and of course uh, maybe he was careful, and uh, a lot of the things that have been imp- implemented against or implied against him were made up. That I th- I certainly think is true. The especially the alleged murder plots, the alleged murder for hire plots that they smeared him with before mm-hmm. the trial and during the trial in front of the jury, even though he had never been convicted or even indicted on any of those murder charges. And s- since then, those charges have gone nowhere. And in fact, there's a lot of good evidence now to suggest that it was actually the corrupt DEA agent who was working uh, to essentially masquerade, perhaps as Ross, or plant false materials on his computer or in on his server. We haven't figured out all the details of that yet, but I imagine we'll hear more as the appeal uh, draws nearer. She goes on with her comment. She says that the site was troubling and terribly misguided and also very dangerous. She said Silk Road was not the libertarian social experiment that Ulbricht made it out to be. She said, quote, you were captain of the ship as the dread pirate Roberts, and you made your own laws, and you enforced those laws. So it wasn't a world without restriction. It wasn't a world of ultimate freedom. It was a world of laws that you created. They were your laws. It's fictional to think of Silk Road as some place of freedom. So, I mean, what? Uh, so he denied some types of sales on his site. No weapons, no child pornography, no poison. Well, those are so far the laws that he decided to pass on his site, uh, yeah. th- the site that he started, sound like pretty good laws to me. So, I mean, wh- what was he, uh, in her opinion, what other than selling drugs was actually going on here that was, that was so bad? Well, they were selling hacking tools. They were selling... Uh, uh, let's see what else was there on there. Hacking tools, drugs, fake IDs. Did you did you say prostitution wasn't allowed on the site or? Uh, there was no prostitution that I know of on the site. It was mostly products. I don't think you could order a service through Silk Road. Mm. Uh, so well, I guess there was some people who would change cash. They would change like cryptocurrency into cash or something like that. So that was kind of a service, but you still ended up with something, something physical usually. Uh, Going on here, she says that, uh, or excuse me, of the many letters and documents, this is the vice.com, the defense submitted regarding the potential harm reduction effects of the Silk Road. Forrest was particularly disgusted with the letter filed by Dr. X, a trained physician who consulted users on the Silk Road about responsible drug use. She (laughs) cited his sale of expired fentanyl patches, a narcotic pain reliever, and his advice to a user who wanted to take MDMA to abandon his antidepressants beforehand. That sounds like really good advice. 
to take MDMA? Or no, or to actually uh, wean yourself off of other things, or it actually clear your body of other drugs that might mess with MDMA. Let's talk about it, and you can join us here. More of the judge's comments at sentencing to Ross Ulbricht, the captain of the Silk Road. It's Free Talk Live. Has this ever happened to you? You're applying for some type of a loan, whether online or in person. When it's time to hit submit, your nerves spike because you're not sure you'll get the approval you seek. There's a different way to approach life. It's called Credit Success Secrets Revealed. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is a revolutionized step-by-step system that you can follow to get all the credit you desire today. We're talking about secured and unsecured credit, car leases, credit cards, and cash. Call 800-568-8960. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works no matter what your current situation, whether you've had bad credit, never had credit, or looking for some business credit, or any type of credit. Please call 800-568-8960. We don't take any personal information. Your personal information is way too valuable to trust to a third-party email or a website that doesn't answer the phone. At Credit Success Secrets Revealed, we show you step-by-step what to place into the financial computer systems that control your credibility in the marketplace today. We practically fill out the forms for you. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works 100% of the time. Call now, 800-568-8960. That's 800-568-8960. 800-568-8960. Is negative content or comments on the web a fact? your personal or professional reputation, unfavorable comments, embarrassing pictures, videos, legal documents, and bad tweets can ruin your personal life, your career, or your business. It happens a lot, and it's just not fair. But what can you do? Reputation.com can protect your good name. Get a free consultation now at 800-831-0771. That's 800-831-0771. Call right now for a free expert reputation analysis. It's easy to squash the unfair attacks with our patented system, and the analysis is absolutely free. Make the best things about you jump out in searches. Protect your personal and professional reputation, your business, and your income. Get your free reputation analysis from reputation.com right now. Call 800 831 0771. 800 831 0771. 800 831 0771. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job seekers and making all the other conversations you have more productive hit survivalspeech.com i'm holland cook did you know that you can listen to and watch free talk live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com not only that but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time do i need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, Mark, at freetalklive.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You're invited to join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. With you in studio tonight, it's Ian. And Conan. Don't forget, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that are waiting for you there. Once again, freetalklive.com. Features on the site include the front page where you can actually control the content 
uh, there on the front page. You can submit to it. It's a Reddit-based system. So you submit whatever news item or a YouTube video, fun post, whatever you want. You can even type up your own text and submit that. Uh, and then other listeners can vote as to whether or not they like or dislike what you've submitted. And you get to vote on their stuff, too. So go and get interactive. It's free, like the rest of our website. At freetalklive.com, we are sharing with you some of the quotes uh, from the now unsealed sentencing transcript from the Silk Road trial. The Silk Road, of course, the world's most infamous underground drug marketplace. It's offline now. In fact, it's been offline for about two years at this point. Their uh, operator and the creator of the site, Ross Ulbricht, a.k.a. Dread Pirate Roberts, has been sentenced to life in prison. So these are some excerpts from the uh, the judge's now unsealed sentencing testimony, or whatever you want to call this, her her lecture against Ross Ulbricht. She says that the court notes that there is the presence, this is, by the way, courtesy of Vice.com's motherboard section, the court notes that there is the presence of Dr. X, who deserves special mention in his particularly dis- in his particularly despicable, that's what it says here, that he has been pointed to as a big part of the harm reduction, she said. I have read each and every post of Dr. X, and I was blown away and infuriated by it. Dr. X is a trained physician, or someone who claimed to be a trained physician, who consulted users on the Silk Road about responsible drug use. So the judge says, it is absolutely clear that Dr. X is part of the problem. He is not part of the solution. And again, it is magical thinking to think so. I'm getting the same idea of people who are against uh, children having sex or young people having sex. It's either abstinence or safe sex. So as soon as some adult comes out and teaches high schoolers or whatnot how to have safe sex, they are immediate, the problem. They are the problem. You should be teaching abstinence, and I believe that this is the exact same argument coming from yeah. this judge. She's like, abstinence, get rid of the drugs. There's no such thing as some guy uh, teaching you how to do it correctly. How to survive, how to live through the experience. Right, so make sure you wean yourself from other drugs. Make sure you're not on something else. You know, Make sure you've drank enough water that day or you're... You know, if you if you're suffering any other other kind of problems, you maybe this is not something you want to do. So this guy is actually probably, I mean, think of how many people he actually probably saved just by giving good advice that you can't find anywhere. Right. You have to go online and and search through. You can't go talk to your family doctor about this stuff. No. And if and if he did know the answers, he wouldn't be able to tell you because then he would lose his job. So, but but you got this guy and he's able to do it safely, uh, anonymously. Using, and, using this site. And so that's it's, a another, wonder, it's a wonderful thing. Right. And that's another example of the harm reduction or the harm reductive aspect of the Silk Road. Uh, the transcript also includes Ulbricht's final plea for leniency before he was sentenced. He broke down in tears as he apologized to the families of people who died from drugs purchased on the Silk Road, who spoke at the sentencing proceedings, and said that he gained a new respect for the law in his 20 months at, in prison at the time. He said at the time, quote, one of the things I've realized about the law is that the laws of nature are much like the laws of man. Gravity doesn't care if you agree with it. If you jump off a cliff, you're still going to get hurt. And even though I didn't agree with the law, I still have been convicted of a crime and must be punished. I understand that now. I understand that now. And I respect the law and the authority now. Mm. Yeah, we we talked about this. We gave uh, his whole sentencing statement. And I know you and Mark were yelling at each other. And I was in between because I always am between you guys. Uh, this whole response is always, I, I'm, I'm not sure about it. Yeah, it seems of course, so Of course, he's being thrown staged. in jail forever. Right. So, you know, what would you say in such, a, such an instance? Would you break down and try to do anything to save your life, or, or would you stand on your principles? Would you say that, no, hey, you know, I, was, I did believe I was above the law, and I still believe that, and I believe that your law is wrong, and I mm-hmm. believe that I was right, and I don't care. You know, I'm, I was doing what I did. In and this case, his begging didn't help him one iota. Oh, it didn't help him at all. Uh, but the question is, did, does he? The question is, does he really feel the what way he that, said? Yeah, exactly what he's saying right now. And I, I, doubt I hope it. not. I hope not too. And I wouldn't blame anybody for going ahead and groveling and or you know, taking a plea deal, eating if, some if, crow if, if or it's, whatever. You know, if we're talking about serious consequences. Well, basically, what we've been told by people who've been sentenced federally, we've got some federal prisoners who've listened to the show because mm-hmm. we're on the radio in some of their broadcast areas. There's federal prisons. And we've had these guys, they've called in, and they've written the show, and they've all said the same thing. If you don't take the plea at federal level, you are going in for the maximum. Right. That's like just almost a guarantee. Yeah, you don't 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 cross swords with the, the master master. The, You're not going to beat the, the top jury. Of the, yeah, they're... You're not going to win on a jury just because they pick the most obedient jurors, 
And once you get convicted by the jury, then you're going away for the mess. I haven't even I, – I haven't gotten jury selection yet since I've been here. Have you? Uh, nope, I have not. I, I'm, I've always been – I've always wondered how they would handle – what how I would have to answer their questions in order to stay – uh, a jury member, or they'll just see my name and toss me out. Probably, if they know who you are, they certainly will. Because I'm, because the, they're if they're if it's a victimless crime, they it's they're not getting. They don't want you. They're not getting my vote. Forrest, the judge, said she spent more than a hundred hours contemplating the sentence before handing it down. You believe that one? No, I don't believe I don't any either. of the guys read the Patriot Act or any of these bills that Congress supposedly have only a couple hours to read before they vote on it. She referenced the 98 letters that were sent to her by friends and family members of Ross Ulbricht testifying to his character and peaceful demeanor. Maybe 98 comments on her Facebook page. She said, quote, there is no reason to make a choice between these two people that I see that are on display. The Ulbricht who is the leader of the criminal enterprise and the Ulbricht who is known and loved. What is clear is that people are very, very complex, and you are one of them. They are made up of many different qualities and many characteristics with no one, quali- no one quality defining them. And there is good in Mr. Ulbricht, I have no doubt, but there is also bad. And what you did in connection with the Silk Road was terribly destructive to our social fabric. Whatever the hell that means. Mm. Forrest said because the case was so widely publicized, a more severe sentence could deter similar crimes in the future. Well, all the evidence shows that you haven't deterred anything, lady. There's more drug marketplaces now than there have you uh, ever just been. just cut the head off the Hydra, and it is, That's right. it is grown because the, people, because the people want it, and it makes sense, and the people are always going to go for, you know, the, the free market is one. She was probably drinking wine while she read the 98 letters. She sentenced Ulbricht to life in prison without parole for the combined counts of narcotics trafficking and distribution of narcotics by means of the Internet. He was also given life without parole to be served concurrently for narcotics conspiracy. Then he was given five years for the count of conspiracy to commit computer hacking and ten years for conspiracy to traffic in fraudulent identification documents. For one count of money laundering conspiracy, he was given 20 years. He's currently appealing his sentence. Don't mess with the money. (laughs) Isn't that the funniest part that the... He gets 20 years for laundering money, Laund- or laundering conspiracy. It's conspiracy to launder money, which means that, you know, we're not really sure if you actually did launder money, but we think you were going to. Mm. <laughs> so, oh boy. Well, anyway, we'll continue to update you as the Ross Ulbricht case develops. Of course, one of the more recent uh, allegations from his mentor on the Silk Road was that there is now there was a plot by an FBI agent who has yet to be unveiled uh, to possibly kidnap Ross Ulbricht's mother and his sister and hold them uh, for ransom, basically. So this is a third guy. A third corrupt agent. We don't know who this person is at this time, and nobody knows who this agent is, but there are some pretty serious allegations out there that he actually exists by the man who was the mentor of Ross Ulbricht. I'm I'm waiting for this movie to come out. It's going to be interesting. I'll watch it. Uh, You can join us here toll-free at 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. What happens when you kick a dog? Conan will tell us. Coming up. Owe $10,000 or more to the IRS? Get on board with the tax admiral. Don't take on the IRS alone. I'll cut penalties and reduce your overall tax bill. Sometimes I can even get it zeroed out completely. We're an A-rated company helping people clean up their mess with the IRS. If you owe $10,000 or more, then call the tax admiral. Call 800-287-7180. Again, that's 800-287-7180. 800-287-7180. Silver has always been nature's very own antibiotic, and only one system allows you to produce an endless supply of nano-sized silver solutions right from the convenience of your home. Silver Lungs. With the addition of our unique lung delivery system, respiratory infections are targeted directly, where traditional oral administration simply cannot reach. This pioneering method also preserves the original particle sizes and delivers your silver solution directly into the bloodstream. See the Silver Lungs generator and lung delivery system at silverlungs.com. That's silverlungs.com. Free Talk Live. How dare you and who do you think you are? I mean, it's my life. It's my business. I should be able to run it how I want to, and my customers should be able to make the choice for themselves as to whether or not they want to do business with me. And they should be able to make that choice based on uh, the quality of my product or my reputation or the fact that I've got third-party certification or whatever factors they deem important. If I'm doing business and you don't trust me or you think I'm shady, then you don't have to do business with me. In fact, you can tell other people what you think about my business and my practices and 
maybe they also will join you in not doing business with me. There's no need for government regulations out there. The marketplace can handle third-party certification of various different products and services to where people who are concerned about whether or not the business they're dealing with is trustworthy can check with a verifiable resource that, indeed, this is a trustworthy individual or a trustworthy company that you're doing business with. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you're going to explain You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot reach Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, whoa. hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think Excuse you are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. Well, this is you ain't going to make Wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you're scared of the property. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimespree.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. It's Free Talk Live. You are invited here. You can join us toll free. 855 450 free. 855 450 3733 with you in studio. Ian here. And Conan. And want to invite you to check out a new graphic novel James versus the New World Order by Brandon Beatros. Illustrated by J. Matthew Root. It's the first in what's estimated to be a five volume, 24 issue series. It's an action comedy graphic novel. What would you do? When a bizarre occult army calling itself the Trust invades your sleepy little mountain hometown, find out what James Contrell, the big-hearted country boy with a crappy job who's learned to live without dreams, does. Because sometimes the guy who's learned to live without dreams might be the best suited to handle a nightmare. If this intrigues you, go to jamesversusthenewworldorder.com. That's jamesvsthenewworldorder.com to contribute to their Kickstarter crowdfunding campaign. Looking to raise $3,000 to pay for the artwork, coloring, production, and distribution. James versus the New World Order dot com. As we go to your calls and thoughts, the numbers are in. The near final numbers from the election, Conan versus Ian. We will see who has uh, won in moments. But first, let's go to Nathan. He's in Texas via Skype. Hello, Nathan. Evening, guys. Hi there. So um, something came up earlier in the show uh, when you mentioned the people, um, you know, the people are afraid to go, uh, you know, get the take. Uh, was it a uh, taxes uh, for schools that Conan had mentioned? Oh, um, they were afraid to do what? Uh, just something about how people were afraid to sort of you put their own money into educating kids. And so oh. they government to do it because that that requires work that requires you know it, and it could be your loss at the end of the day if something isn't done correctly but if it's everyone else's money well then there's kind of an assurance that uh, hey whatever happens it's all good because the community paid into it 
Uh, but everyone's afraid of actually spending their own money on things that are important to them. I and I think that that is that that's fallacy right there. In that, you know, if it's something that is really important and something that is good and something that needs to happen, and you're not going to have a hard time finding supporters. You're not going to have a hard time finding. Uh, you do a Kickstarter. Uh, right. Do write a letter to the editor. You know, you'll uh, start a Facebook group. You have, you'll get people who will uh, come and support a good idea. If it's a bad idea, if it's iffy, you know, if there are, you know, maybe it's the first time it's been tried, and maybe there's not a lot of people who actually want it to happen. Well, there's no better way to get that funded than to steal the money from those very people in order to make it happen. There's a there's a lot of that happening in this country and in this area where you've got people who you got federal grants, you got state grants, mm-hmm. and a lot for for bear cats or for fish farms or for in my particular case up where I live a stupid road calming project which is supposed <laughs> to make us safer by painting stripes on the road and putting speed bumps up when there is no problem in my in my neighborhood it's it's it accident free and yet there's a hundred thousand dollar grant and if we don't if we don't jump on it well some other town's gonna get it. So right. you've got lots of little projects. Bearcat. The Bearcat is a prime example. Two hundred and what? Two hundred eighty eighty thousand? Something like that. Two seventy five. Two eighty. It's it's not something that we even need, but oh, it's free. So and if we don't take it, the next town over is going to get it. So I mean, you've got you've got plenty of uh, projects like this, things that aren't necessary to to make our lives better, but because they come up from higher ups and because it's everyone's money, it's you know, in other words, it's free. Then you know, hey, let's. There's there's no stopping. Uh, there's no stopping us at the end of the day. Um, so, what, what do you think, Nathan? Well, uh, I wanted to propose a, a talk about a theory that uh, I've been learning about lately that kind of proposes an alternate explanation for you know why there's all this uh, in this case why there's this tax money floating around and you know why why people on the left might say well we should educate the children but you know we're not going to we're not going to do charity or whatever ourselves or people it. on the right say we should bomb this country but because it's all of us it's that they're supposedly defending then it's all right to tax everyone to buy those missiles exactly it, maybe you know what i'm going to say going in cuz it, it covers that too uh, it's called rk selection theory it's kind of this uh interesting theory i've been reading about it's um it's by this guy who runs this blog and it basically, it's this theory that in nature you have two different reproductive strategies where on, on like one side, it's uh, a lot of children in a resource-rich environment, and on the other side, it's a low amount of children in a resource-scarce environment. And in this book, he makes the, the case that it can be, that these uh, strategies can be linked to psychologies in humans that produce um, people on the left or the right. Now, at first I was like, whoa, this, this can't be, right? But there's actually studies that claim that not only can uh, genes contribute to a person's political belief, but that people can actually have, um, you know, like genetic, um, like it's weird, like genetic influences on the kinds of beliefs that they have. Like there was one study, for example, and I'm just uh, quoting one off the top of my head that compared how correlated the views of fraternal twins were to um, identical twins. And they found the identical twins uh, had more correlation in their beliefs on like a survey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, hinting that maybe their genes might have been uh, contributing a little bit to it. I and feel like somebody has called about this RK thing in the past. And, and I, you know, I, I feel like I've heard about this. But how does that take into play libertarianism, which is not li- right, nor is it left? We're a healthy combination of the two, Ian. We're, exactly. We're the, <laughs> we're the healthy ones. <laughs> <laughs> so the main, yeah, it, it's uh, exactly the libertarians are kind of like in between um, the best way, the best analogy for the, the three strategies that I found by reading this blog is that uh, the conservatives are kind of like the wolves. They, you know, competitive, they hunt and they have a lot of investment in their offspring. And the people, the, the people on the left are like the rabbits who, um, you know, this is a convenient example, who are uh, less uh, effort into offspring and, uh, you know, less uh, empathy for the in-group or whatever. And the libertarians are more like the kind of go-it-alone cougars or like uh, the, por- the porcupines. Yeah, a porcupine, bear, like these kind of these, these kind of uh, animals that are competitive, but they kind of want to be left alone. So, are what you're saying is what you're bo- to boil this down? You're saying that there's a theory that uh, political beliefs or whatever it is that leads to them are partly genetic. Uh, partly uh, genetic from reproductive strategies, because in nature. You'll have different environments, and then animals will like adopt over time different strategies for those environments. 
So uh, basically, yes. And, uh, and, uh, one, uh, one, of the, one of the last studies I saw on left versus right genetics was uh, supposedly lefts are uh, more, they're more inclined to take risks, whereas conservatives' rights are, they're more inclined to hunker down and protect themselves and not, and not be willing to accept. Willing to ex Ooh, what happened? They're not willing to adapt. Nathan, um, are you still there? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was, uh, I was wondering what. Uh, so, so the question was, uh, would would that predict that leftists are more likely to take risks? Well, um, if that study is correct, I mean, it it does seem that uh, you know there's there are two different types of people out there, and they tend to lean in one or, in one or other directions. Whereas I consider myself. Uh, I like to I hunker down on some things, but I'm a risk taker in others. So I mean, I I mm -hmm. think I have a healthy uh, sense of the two. Uh, well, I did. I was interested to talk to you about it, Conan, because I know you've been in the armed forces, and one of the one of the traits on this list. So there's like three basic traits that go with each psychology. Mm -hmm. um, like the main, the three traits are competitiveness, um, monogamy, and high in group loyalty. That's the the wolf uh, side, and then the opposite of those for the the uh, rabbit side. And it seems like, um, I guess, being in the military, that would be a very competitive environment, right? Where you're kind of, uh, you know, there's a lot of in-group loyalty because you, you know, have the flag and the oaths and, and you know. Is that it kind competitive of... as much as it is just following orders? I don't think it's competitive at all. I think that, well, I, think I, mean, you're, I think you're going to find more competition in the business world. I mean, you. Right. That's competition, too. I mean, like direct competition, like wars and combat and that kind of thing. I, I I think a lot of people get get pulled into the military who are of both persuasions, and mm -hmm. some of them figure out real quick because we're in there for four years, four years in it, four four years active, four years inactive. Sometimes they're different, but a lot of people who figure it out real quick, like myself, uh, four years was enough for me, and I was out of there. I didn't like taking orders. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew that there was a lot of nonsense taking place. I knew I could do better other places, and it it wasn't for me. By the way, I have a lot of family in the military. But they're all officers, so they're actually the they ones stuck who. With are, it. Well, no, the, well, there's a difference. They're actually handing out the orders, whereas I was taking it the whole time. Hey, thanks, Nathan, for your call. Our toll-free number is eight fifty-five four fifty free. If you want to join us, your thoughts on being born a certain political persuasion, uh, eight fifty-five four fifty free. Free talk live. When the most powerful and destructive witch in 13th century France chooses a successor, her frightened young protege, Liana, escapes into the wild. Pursued by witch hunters, the town watch, and her mistress, Liana's only hope is a pair of newly returned crusaders, one with PTSD, the other a complete rascal. The Witch's Hand by Wendy Joseph is a cut above the usual sword and sorcery fair, a thinking person's historical fantasy novel. Available now at your favorite booksellers or visit wendyjosephwrites.com. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. 
Here's an urgent alert from the Student Loan Hotline. The average student loan debt is $25,000. Have you been out of college for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? If you are struggling with paying off your student loan, if you are past due, we can help. Nationwide Student Loan Relief can now restructure your student loans. We can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop harassing collection calls, and even eliminate your student loan payment. If you can't afford your student loans, or if you're past due and you need help, you must call right now. We will restructure your loan or your money back, and that's a guarantee. So call the Student Loan Hotline right now. 800-291-2865. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Ovaltine. Give your kids the nutrition they need to be their best. Visit us at OvaltineUSA.com. Telling your child about healthy food choices is important, but showing her what to eat goes a lot further. Have her help create the grocery list, then bring her to the store with you. Picking out healthy foods together helps kids get in the habit of thinking about what they're eating every day. For more tips like these, visit us at Parenthood.com slash Your Family Today. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us here toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Ron Paul speaking out on various different bubbles that uh, exist in the U.S. economy. Apparently. And not the good kind that, you, the fun that kind, you buy no. at the store and you go outside on a nice summer day and you play with your kids and you blow bubbles. Blowing bubbles, no, nor bubble bath. No, nope, not, not nope. the fun bubbles. Uh, we can talk more about that here in a little bit. Uh, but, uh, Conan, I know you wanted to talk about kicking dogs. Uh, specifically, there's a political candidate who actually has, has been eliminated from the you can't competition. Make, you can't make this up, man. Just this no. morning on... Election Day. That's right. One of the candidates for one of the wards. He wasn't in this our. In he wasn't in our race. Keen, but, New Hampshire. Uh, yeah. Uh, he be, because he was a businessman and he owned you know rental units out there. Right. He might even be someone who I would support until you hear crap like this and the and the fact that he's running slums. You know. Oh, so this guy, Yeah. This guy is just completely. You know. Who who knows who this guy is? But he kicked a dog. And you a hear little dog. a little dog. He kicked it and he killed it. He kicked oh, it hard God. enough to actually kill the poor thing. And this was is, it an old dog? It was an old. It supposedly it was seventeen year old uh, Chihuahua yeah. mix. And uh, I suspect that the the old man probably this is probably a. He's not he, that old, is he? I thought he was in his fifties. Eh, he's old. That's not that old, He's dude. old compared to me. <laughs> you and I are going to be in our 50s I, in another half a decade and a half. I'm, I'm going to be uploading soon. <laughs> <laughs> I, I suspect this man ran into this dog on a number of occasions. He probably kicked it on a number of occasions, yeah. and this time was the last time. And he killed it. He's in the paper. He's still got votes. He's still got like 60 votes, uh, according to the polls just now. But it brings up an interesting uh, point that has always uh, troubled me. And that is when these when these types of abuses take place. I'm not condoning this at all. This is this guy. Hold on. Let me give you a little more from the story here. I think it's important to, at the very least, put out there why he allegedly kicked the dog. What were the circumstances? Because if there's a vicious dog coming at me, and it's going, it appears that it is going to harm me in some way. I feel like I'm fully within my rights. And it's on your property to kick the dog. You are being aggressed. I don't upon. care if it's. I don't care whose property it's on. If, you know, if I'm walking down Main Street and some crazed, you know, frothing at the mouth dog's going to looks like he's going to do something to me. Right, right. I think with, I'm yeah, within I, my I, rights. I left that out. And that is a very important aspect of this story. The dog peed and was kicked by this man. 
Right. So it, it apparently, uh, I guess it, it, it went into the yard. It doesn't say it went into the house. The story here from the Keen Sentinel at sentinelsource.com says it wandered into the yard of a rental property on the street where he was working. And the dog went to the bathroom, which I presumes, I presume that means the dog did not go into the bathroom in the home. <laughs> I think that means the dog peed in the yard. Mm-hmm. And even if the dog had peed in the house, that's not a reason to kick a dog. You, you, don't, you don't kick a dog for going pee in the wrong place ever. You can yell at the dog. Bad dog. No, and it probably won't. Uh, well, I know there's there are there are methods on how to train an animal to do. But this uh, wasn't his this animal. Is, this wasn't his animal, and like I said, I think this has probably happened more than once. The dog coming on the yard doing its business, and Who what do you, and what cares? do you do? I mean, it's good for a yard to have a dog pee in the yard. Right? I salt salty. Uh, no, but no, it's not. It kills it's the good. grass. No, it no. doesn't. Yes, it does. What are you talking about? Doesn't it kills it make it better? the grass? No, it like kills it. It's got it. nitrogen or something in it, and that nope. helps it make it greener. No, nope. like you and can it... see where the grass has been peed on because it's dark green or whatever. No, because it's yellow because it <laughs> killed it. Trust me, I had a dog, and right. and, and he he. He never, left patches all over the place. I've never and they seen also that happen. Le- and they lead the landmines as well. And so you go out there and you step on it, and then who? So, and some neighbors are like, Still, "Well, you don't get to kick a dog if it's taking a crap or taking a pee in the yard. That's just not the way you respond." Right. And if and like you said, like you brought up, if the dog had actually done damage to him, yeah. like he was atta- trying to attack him, right. like supposedly all these cop shootings of the dogs is what is happening where the dogs are attacking when it's when we know that the dog is just chained up to a fence and barking like mad at an intruder um no it, none of that happened the guy just went got mad at the dog kicked him killed him and which brings me to my question though yeah uh the people come out of the woodworks when these types of stories come up i mean people who would never comment on a story on an article ever come out of the woodworks i'm i'm expecting to get some calls on because this is just such a uh i don't know it it, it really touches the heartstrings of people when a dog is 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 uh is beaten and when, and when it's not fair sure a kid gets uh you know uh, a, a kidnapped and people will never say a thing i don't know someone about is, that. someone is uh is violated by true. someone's so their house is broken in by a burglar People never say that's not true at all. But Conan. when it comes to a dog getting kicked and killed, I mean, people come out of the woodwork. All right, well, look, I'll give it to you that it's certainly true that more people seem to care about dogs than they do about humans. I'll, I'll give you that. Yes. You remember the story in uh, it was Afghanistan, I think it was, where some troops there was video of them throwing a dog, like a pu- just taking a puppy and throwing it off a cliff. That went viral, and people were rightfully upset about it, but they they didn't get so upset about all the murders and the rapes that the troops were committing against human beings over there. Or or children being dug out of rubble, you know, their lifeless bodies, just nothing but just chunks of them. I'll give you that, but still, I mean, right here in in Arkeen, New Hampshire, there was a story a little while back about a teenage uh, girl who went missing, and there were a lot of people who were reposting that, and Mm -hmm. they seemed concerned. So I think the, the closer to home, the... A case of abuse is the more people will care about something like that. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not, I'm not saying those people yeah. don't exist. It depends, right. and it depends on the level and the and, and you said a little girl. So I mean, what if it was a a teenage? What if it was a middle aged man? Yeah, probably not. So you much. probably wouldn't hear so much. But I mean, it's when it comes to cuteness and right. and and young people and and puppies and kittens and and it just uh, I think people have a disjointed sense of what is actually important. So why is the middle aged guy who died on the street? Mm-hmm. Why, why is the why is the little the heroin the, addict why, or the heroin? Yeah, why is the ten year old girl so much more important to us than the middle aged guy? Is it because he lived his life longer and he? That's he, a good he, question. I mean, why do people come out uh, in droves to? I guess to, that to, would probably to, be... to defend some articles and not others when it's when it when when you boil it down. You know, is it half a glass of water or is it is it half full, yeah. half empty? I guess you could argue that, well, it's more tragic for the 10-year-old girl because she does have her life ahead of her, whereas a middle-aged man, at least, you know, he's had a set of experiences and so he's not as important in the scheme of things. In the case of the puppies, a little dog, if it had been a big German shepherd, probably not as much as the little chihuahua because he was less likely, the dog was less likely able to defend itself, whereas a German shepherd probably could have bit the guy's leg off if he started kicking on him. Yeah, that's true. He probably broke all kinds of bones when he kicked that chihuahua. What was it? A Pekingese chihuahua, apparently, according to little little. 
a uh, little field field goal. A little punter dog. Peggy's Chihuahua, 17 years old. It died afterwards. He's been arrested. He actually apparently turned himself in uh, and was arrested, charged with the misdemeanor count of animal cruelty. He has been released on uh, $1,000 personal recognizance, and he did not win his election today. He, he did not. not. He only, he got, not a, he only got a couple of votes. And, then, and, then, and the next question, I of think course, he got is, more votes than we did in that ward, though. And, and, and his ward? <laughs> yeah. The next question is, of course... You know, how should government, how should the community, supposedly that is government, how should the community handle this guy? Should he go yeah. to jail? Should he be fined? And I think who, he should and, pay restitution. And who gets the money? Yeah, I think he, he should pay restitution. Yeah, of course. To the he should owner. pay restitution to the owner, regardless of how old the dog was or the right. size or what or however much the dog Everyone cost. Everyone loves their dog, no matter how old it is. So I mean, but but this guy is probably he might even he might even see some jail time for this. It's class. I'm. I'm guessing well, it's a class. I, a misdemeanor. Actually, I take that back. I think it's because he was on his property. It's just, they say it's a misdemeanor. That's that's jail time. I mean, if it's a class in New Hampshire, there's a class A and class B. If it's class A, then he's facing up to a year in jail, uh, as well as possible fines. And if it's class B, then he's facing possible fines. And is that the right? Is that the right way to do this? I mean, criminal charges. You mean against this guy? Because I mean, because we're all going to be paying for it. And it's what thirty something dollars yeah, a day. I don't think he should th- go to jail. I, I I think that restitution is the appropriate solution here. Uh, let's go with your calls and thoughts, though. We can come back to the dog kicking here in a moment. Walter is listening in Minnesota to WNMT in the northern part of the state. Hey, Walter. Hi. Hey, you're on the air. Hi. Well, I was just wanted to talk about what you guys were talking about earlier regarding, uh, like genetically people are more either tending to be Republican or Democrat or Libertarian. Mm -hmm. And it made me think about that in my life quite a bit. I remember when I was 10 years old, I was in a severe, severe bike accident. And it it completely changed my viewpoint on life. And I think sometimes things change our viewpoint other than genetics. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Correct. Absolutely. I I agree. Inheritance versus, or hereditary versus uh, your environment. Well, plus how many times have you had a situation where two parents are Republicans or two parents are Democrats and the kid turns out to be the opposite, right? Like the kid will grow up and and go in the other direction. Maybe they rebel in the first years, but usually they will go, they will find their parents' ideology in the end. I don't see that. You think so? I don't see that much. Yeah, they might rebel in the first years, the first early years. Well, I've certainly not become more like my parents over time. Uh, stand by, Walter. If you have more thoughts you want to add, you're welcome to do that. Coming up in hour number three, you can join us here on Free Talk Live, 855-450-3733. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof form of money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom and the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. 
You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, October 6, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.71 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,139 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $244. Antiwar.com reports another day of intense fighting was reported in the central Mari province of Yemen on Monday as pro-Saudi forces attacked Shiite Houthi territory, aiming to open up a route into the capital city of Sana'a. At least 55 fighters on both sides were killed and another 100 were wounded. The results of the fighting were, as is so often the case, a matter of dispute between the two factions, with the pro-Saudi side claiming mass surrenders by Houthis and small territorial gains, while the Houthis denied this and reported repelling the attack and killing dozens of mercenaries. The pro-Saudi side in this fight includes tribal factions along with Saudi and United Arab Emirate ground troops, while the Houthis are backed by the remnants of the Yemen military. The two sides have been fighting over Marib for weeks despite repeated predictions from Saudi officials that the province and the rest of the country would be liberated in short order. The Houthis have controlled Sana'a for over a year and six months into the Saudi war their control only extends from Aden along the southern coast. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula has capitalized on the war as well, seizing Mukalla and some of the nearby areas. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports California Governor Jerry Brown on Monday said he had signed legislation to make it legal for terminally ill patients to end their lives with the assistance of a physician. In Brown signing the law, California became the fifth state to permit assisted suicide. Specifically, the law releases physicians from liability for prescribing lethal doses of drugs for patients who want to quicken their deaths. Brown wrote in a signing message, In the end, I was left to reflect on what I would want in the face of my own death. I do not know what I I would do if I were dying in prolonged and excruciating pain. I am certain, however, that it would be a comfort to be able to consider the options afforded by this bill, and I would not deny that right to others. The Los Angeles Times reported that the California law is based on one in Oregon, where more than 100 people ended their lives last year with the help of a physician. The law makes assisted suicide legal for patients who are not reasonably expected to survive beyond six months. The controversial legislation has drawn support and opposition from all sides. The Catholic Church has opposed it while Right to Die advocates have favored it. Brown said he weighed both sides before making the final decision to sign it. The law, though, is not set to take effect until sometime next year. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Bitcoin Not Bombs. Bitcoin Not Bombs is a launching pad for nonprofits and social entrepreneurs into the financial freedom of the Bitcoin economy. Bitcoin Not Bombs offers premium publicity campaigns designed to facilitate an organization's adoption of Bitcoin as a payment system and to fully capitalize on that decision in their fundraising efforts. Bitcoin Not Bombs is fully committed to being the hub of the nonprofit sector of the Bitcoin economy, maximizing the potential cross promotion of all our clients and commercial partners. To learn more, visit BitcoinNotBombs.com. Reuters reports missing cargo ship El Faro, hit by powerful Hurricane Joaquin, is believed to have sunk off the Bahamas and one presumed crew member is confirmed dead. The search continues for at least 32 other people, most of them Americans, who were aboard the ship when it vanished in what maritime experts are calling the worst cargo shipping disaster involving a U.S. flagged vessel since 1983. Coast Guard Captain Mark Fedor told reporters, we're assuming the vessel has sunk. He added that the search and rescue teams were no longer 
were looking for the ship, which sent a distress call early on Thursday after getting caught in Joaquin's ferocious winds and waves as high as 50 feet. He acknowledged that those aboard faced steep odds against survival, but officials later said that three Coast Guard cutters would stay in the general area where the ship was believed to have gone down to continue searching through Monday night. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. After this morning's police raid on Cosmopolitan Magazine's male pleasure laboratory revealed that test subjects were forced to endure horrific abuses and inhumane living conditions, Onion reporters spoke to 23-year-old Daniel Chertok, one of the numerous men exploited for the monthly magazine's studies on erotic stimulation. It was awful. It drove us wild for days on end. Once they made me lather myself with gallons of sexy bath oils and then read thousands of racy text messages until my eyesight began to blur. Then for the next 12 hours, they blasted sultry songs into my ears and made me simulate 50 crazy hot sex moves. They said I couldn't rest until they found the bliss button on my Randy regions. According to Chair Talk, test subjects were often subjected to hours of grueling experimentation at the hands of female scientists. Chair Talk added that many of his fellow subjects were not lucky enough to survive the excruciating treatment. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Of course, you can join us here on the radio waves. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Whether it's the Silk Road or kicking dogs, these are some of the things we've discussed tonight. You can comment on those still. With you in studio, it's Ian. And Conan. And also Ian versus Conan. You and I are in a contest, Conan, in uh, Keene, New Hampshire. It's all about competition. That's see, what makes the day go by, Ian. To, to see who will, uh, will best... One another in the competition for city council. You and I are running in the race. We've got the official numbers, and we'll share those with you here in a few moments. Uh, and also, maybe we'll talk about bubbles coming up here with uh, with Ron Paul. Not that we're going to have Ron on the show, but we have had Ron on the show in the past. Just uh, some comments from him on RT relating to economic bubbles. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. If you want to join us here, the story we were just discussing, though, is the animal cruelty case of a man right here in Keene, New Hampshire, which is where we live, Conan, uh, who's been charged now with misdemeanor count of animal cruelty. He's 55 years old, turned himself in after being accused of kicking and killing a 17-year-old Pekingese Chihuahua yep. in downtown Keene. Apparently, the Chihuahua urinated. of uh, Maybe it did number two. I don't know. We're not real clear on what exactly the dog did. The description in the story is that it went to the bathroom in the yard. Which could have meant maybe he did both. Yeah, maybe he did both. And apparently the man, Toby Toosley, believed that that deserved a kicking. So he gave a boot to this animal, which probably caused some sort of internal damage, considering the dog was 17, and a chihuahua. Uh, I don't know how many chihuahuas can get through a swift kick with the uh, I think, I, think, I think they're pretty durable. Yeah. But uh, at 17, the, maybe not so much. Yeah. The age of the dog leads me to believe that uh, it was just going to wake up dead one one of these mornings. Uh, and so it was right there at the end. And that's the way you want which, your which dog doesn't, to go. Which doesn't make it any better, you know, or it doesn't make it okay. Uh, but, no, it's not okay at all. I mean, this guy is completely out of line. And I don't know if he was drunk or what, or if he just hates dogs or what his problem is. But the only time I could ever see it being appropriate to put a boot to a dog like that would be if I truly believed that I was in danger of being bitten or, by said or dog. Or your the people in your vicinity, your kids or your... Or your, being attacked your, yeah, by it, Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's when you go kick some dog. Right. In this case, he has no excuse. I mean, this guy is as good as... He might as well go ahead and take the guilty plea at this point because, you know, I believe there were witnesses in this case. There were people who whose dog it was. It wasn't his own dog. It was somebody else's dog. Mm -hmm. And you, your question about this was what? Why do people care so much? I mean, this is a horrible thing, but there are so much more horrible things going on in the world. There are whole countries sure. being bombed right now. They're attacking Syria right now. The hospital that just got bombed. Yeah, that's right. And it's horrible. And they don't talk about this on the news. I mean, it's just and no one. Well, the hospital bombing's been. Got, yeah, it's gotten it, some yeah, coverage. It's gotten more coverage. It got more coverage than the dog kicker did. Yeah. Once again, it goes with my argument. I mean, there are some uh, instances where 
the ho- the 22 people who died at the hospital are more important than the 22 people who died at the wedding. For some reason, a hospital is more more cutesy, more it's more on the it, it tugs more on the heartstrings of people than than say the wedding. The wedding right. is not even better, but I mean, so but if it was some uh, supposed uh, terrorists, 22 terrorists who were driving down the road, you know, no one, no one cares, no one bats yeah. an eye. If it was some kids, no, but it was the ho- people in the hospital or a dog or a dog. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. People just come out and and this is something they can, this is something they can speak on. This is something where they have an opinion. But when it's real things like people dying, you never hear from these guys. It's like I mean, you have to make a decision. What is really important in this life? Uh, yeah, so if you've got an answer for Conan's question, our toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE because it definitely seems that way. Uh, 855-450-3733, that it's easier to get people to care about uh, animals that are cute because mm-hmm. it's probably not so much that they would care about a snake being stomped or well, something if, like if that. Right? If this, is such, a, if this is, is such a huge deal, then you've got to go and attack every farmer across the Across the globe, you know, people who are raising cattle. For slaughtering pigs. Cows, uh, cows chickens, rabbits. Yeah. I mean, they are systematically killing these animals on a regular basis. It's, sure, it's their livelihood. Out, I think that uh, someone might point out, that, and not the most, not the super animal rights people, but uh, some people sort of middle ground would point out that, well, you know, the cows and pigs, they're raised for the purposes of, and they, of being and they were, slaughtered. And they were hopefully raised humanely, yeah. and when it did come to the death blow, it was quick and painless, and they didn't even know it happened. Not the same, they would argue, as a man lashing out in anger at a tiny little chihuahua. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I think you're still on to something here, is that, that people do seem to care more about a cute little animal than they do about their fellow man and woman and child. So if you want to share your thoughts, you're welcome to join us. We do have Skype, by the way. Uh, Skype username tonight for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And the results are in, Conan, uh, from, dun, dun, dun. from the election. They've actually been in for a little bit, but they, they've not yet been certified. So I guess, you know, in, in theory, there could be a shifting of a few numbers here. But ultimately, you and I did not make the cut. Oh. Uh, there were, let's see. There were 10 candidates that were going to make it through in a 16-candidate race, and you and I made it in at positions, uh, let's see, you were actually ahead of me by almost 20, almost 20 votes, 114 votes for you, Conan, compared to my 96. Hmm. So but congratulations. We're, but, but we're still at the tail end there. and uh, We weren't the total tail end, uh, but after us was one of the stop-free keen folks. He got one vote fewer than I did, uh, although one of them who was a, a native of the area, she knows a lot of people, and she put a lot of a lot of effort into her campaign. She, she is had, she in had, sixth place. She had signs, and she yeah. was doing the Facebook stuff. And, uh, and, then, uh, and she's cute, too. And then our very own Johnson, who was trying to run as an anonymous sort as of a, candidate. As a black sheep, kind of a, yeah. under the under the radar. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to talk to him later about this, because he feels like his race was spoiled, or his experiment was spoiled. And I guess what, and I don't know exactly what he means by that, because I did post a, a voting guide today to freekeen.com, which had his name in it. I didn't even think about it. Mm-hmm. He didn't want people to sort of know that he was a, a free stater or whatever. Thing is, it didn't take much to find that out, because all you had to do was Google his his real name. Johnson is not his his legal name. All you had to do was Google his real name and the word Keen, and the first result that came up was his LinkedIn profile. And then, of course, they were creating, the haters were creating their own uh, voting, voting recommendations. Yeah. I mean, that's... So that's, he was that's, a, out, that's a given. He, he was outed as a free stater or free keener or whatever prior to the election. And so everybody everybody who's connected with the sort of these networks knew that about him. But I think it actually hurt him to not answer the Sentinels questionnaire. He did the worst of all the 16 candidates. He got 35 votes, which is a third, almost a third of the next vote getter. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, the top vote getter in uh, in the, the the race got 925 yeah, votes. Some guy who just came out of the woodworks, but he's he's been here forever. Right. Some some professor uh, and, at Keene State. So, uh, so, yeah, basically you were fourth to last. I was third to last in this race. And so we were, we've, we've been eliminated from the competition. Uh, thank God. Uh, for, for this year. <laughs> but until next time, Ian. Yeah. Next time. Uh, and they're not getting rid of me. This is not that easy. I, I want to see, uh, cause I, w- I want to tally up, get an idea of the ult- uh, the total votes and, uh, and then find my percentage. 
because I've yeah. been, because I've been going up about five percent every time, and I want to see if this has actually put me up. Or I'm about the same every time. So here's one of the things I wanted to point out about this, Conan. Uh, the difference between your vote total and one of the, the lower vote total of the top five, right? So presuming the top five are the same top five in the next contest in the mm -hmm. general election, presuming they're the ones who get in, uh, you would have needed another 452 votes. Yeah, none nowhere close. To get in there. Um, now, you know, that's doable as far as people moving to New Hampshire. As far as, you know, we've got 20,000 people who are going to sign up for the Free State Project. There are, uh, you know, probably 1,000 or so that could, in theory, move to the Keene area. I don't think they're all going to move to Keene. I don't think that even 10% of them will move to Keene. Uh, but out of 20,000, 10% is 2,000, and 5% would be 1,000. So if 5% of them actually move to Keene, but it's also unlikely that all 20,000 are going to move. So let's just say we get 10,000, mm -hmm. which makes our 5% 500 people. If we can get 5% of the people, 5% of those 10,000 10, people to move to Keene, New Hampshire, that's enough votes, If presuming they all vote, which is also unlikely because there's some apolitical people out there too. But that's enough votes to, uh, to change a, a primary result. Yeah, that's all we need. I mean, the worst part about our situation is the people who will most likely vote for us. They don't vote. They don't vote. Right. Either they, either they don't believe in it or they are too busy. They, they've lost faith in the system. Right. You can't fight City Hall. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they've given up. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. Has this ever happened to you? You're applying for some type of a loan, whether online or in person, when it's time to hit submit, your nerves spike because you're not sure you'll get the approval you seek. There's a different way to approach life. It's called Credit Success Secrets Revealed. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is a revolutionized step-by-step -step system that you can follow to get all the credit you desire today. We're talking about secured and unsecured credit, car leases, credit cards, and cash. Call 800-568-8960. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works no matter what your current situation, whether you've had bad credit, never had credit, or looking for some business credit, or any type of credit. Please call 800-568-8960. We don't take any personal information. Your personal information is way too valuable to trust to a third-party email or a website that doesn't answer the phone. At Credit Success Secrets Revealed, we show you step-by-step -step what to place into the financial computer systems that control your credibility in the marketplace today. We practically fill out the forms for you. Credit Success Secrets Revealed works 100% of the time. Call now, 800-568-8960. That's 800-568-8960. 800-568-8960. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements. 
or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click Get Notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is your Robertson Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. Gold, silver, and Bitcoin are all higher. But I saw former Fed Chairman Bernanke opened his book tour saying more Wall Street executives should have gone to jail in the 2008 crisis. Was there even one? No. Hey, Ben, isn't accessory after the fact also a crime? Isn't it time to rethink your investment strategy? Robertson Roberts Brokerage, 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can bring up what you want. Our toll free number here is 855 450 free. And that's 855-450-3733 with you in studio, Ian here. And Conan. And I want you to know how you can get 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. When you use code FTL at vistaprint.com. If you're a small business owner or you're going to start a small business, then you probably already know how expensive uh, that business cards can be. Plus... You know, you've also might want to get some other products like, oh, I don't know, postcards, flyers, banners, apparel, and invitations. Vistaprint does all of that. Tons of custom products for your home and office needs. Customize your text on the cards, the colors, backsides. You can even upload your logo or upload the entire graphic. Maybe you're a graphics design pro or you've got a, a pre-made uh, graphic like I have done. I've made a Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree promo card with Vistaprint. And you can go there. It's it's super easy, very user-friendly. Using their tool on their site is just, it's a breeze. You go to vistaprint.com, use code FTL. It's a special offer for you, dear listener. You get 500 business cards starting at just $9.99. That's up to a 50% savings over the regular site pricing. A fantastic deal. Tons of layouts and design options are available. Even special stuff like you can make your card look real fancy uh, with metallic or spot gloss finish. Uh, even a thicker card stock as well. Go to vistaprint.com and get 500 custom business cards for just $9.99 with code FTL, like Free Talk Live, as we continue here. Conan defeating uh, me in the primary here with uh, nearly 20 votes on top of my 96 votes, you with, I think, 114. Uh, the final results are not yet certified by the city clerk, but we're going to say we're going to call that one a decisive victory for you Conan. I, I think that's the first time that uh, that you have surpassed me in vote total. You you and I ran against each other in the uh, school board election once and I believe I I got more votes in that election, but none of us put any effort into that election. Mm -hmm. This one you put some effort in. A uh, little bit. You put signs. signs up. I put signs up. I mean That's all you did. You answered the questions from the Sentinel, you put signs up. All I did was answer the uh, the questions. I didn't put any signs up. I got there's one guy that drives by. He's always encouraging me to make handmade signs. He says that that's what really sells sells a candidate around here. And I'm like, look, man, I don't have time for it. I'm just not interested in in doing that. If you want to make signs for me, please, by all means. I'll ahead. tell you, I put up maybe so I got 50 signs. Okay. Um, I put up all of them. Nice. And How many have stolen been stolen so far? Well, I found I found two that were pulled out of the ground and laying over hmm. at one location. Could it have this been wind? No, not this in this situation. And it wasn't the grass cutters coming through, cutting okay. the grass, and then putting and not putting the signs back. Someone pulled this out of the ground and just laid it right where it was. Everything else is still there. No, there have been no other uh, thefts or. Uh, That's good. So I mean, but I still spent maybe three, four hours putting that crap up. And, sure. I mean, it, that was that was time that I could have spent doing something else. So was it worth it? Uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know. Well, at least you have the signs. They look nice. You got the yellow and black, kind of the typical uh, voluntarist color scheme, and very high contrast as well. So they look they look good. I think they look sharp. And you you were smart about it too because you got the kind of signs that you can use for anything. All well, your say is like vote solid A. And, right? I, and, I, and it has some of my uh, my ideology at the bottom. Right. Uh, lower taxes, smaller government, common sense, and I think that's what killed me because. You know, what part? There, you have so many the people who vote in the primaries. Yeah. They're trying to get something from government. They are, they see lower taxes and they immediately think I'm going to start just eliminating positions or I'm going to start cutting their favorite projects. And that they're the last person I'm going to they're going to vote for. So maybe maybe that was a mistake. The other the other thing was not actually putting my position on the signs might have been a mistake. Everyone else said. You city, mean for city, counselor? city councilor or mayor on their signs. I'm the, I was the only one that just had my name and some of the description of my ideology on the bottom. Uh, the question is, did that hurt me? I don't know. I think that is an interesting question. I think it's a smart way to do signs because then you can use them for I can anything. Use them for, I can use them for school board. I right. can use them for state rep. So right. I mean, I mean, and if I and if it really bothers me later on, I can actually like laminate up some. Uh, uh, partial signs to stick on the, yeah. the existing signs saying, this is what I'm running for. Well, uh, so I, don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to be running again. So wait, so you were talking about the results. You were talking about the people who are, who are likely to vote at a primary. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I did some exit polling today outside of the uh, one of the polling locations. In, in Arkeen, New Hampshire, there are five polling locations. There's five wards, one location per ward. Uh, so I was only at one of these locations, and I was the only one doing the exit polling today. So it's a limited, it's a limited uh, little snippet of who was out voting. Usually, when I do these exit polls, this is like the third time that I've I've done them. Uh, usually, there's there's one question that I ask, so it's a really easy kind of like activist thing to do. Uh, when somebody's coming out of the polls, I will ask them, "Hey, do you have time for a quick one question exit poll?" And actually, this time around, I got a lot of people who were willing to answer it, which mm -hmm. was nice. Maybe it was because the weather was nice, and so you know, wasn't a big deal to stand there for a little bit. Uh, but the question is, do you think government is too big, too small, or just the right size? Now, there are some people who are smart, uh, you know, very intelligent people, and who they realize that there's different types of governments out there. So they'll say, like, well, which government, right? Do you mean the federal, state, local? So when they start get, getting too detailed, it kind of ruins the, the question. I'm looking for somebody with that visceral, visceral response, like, too big. You know, somebody who hears that question, they, they know the answer. Mm -hmm. Too big. Um, so there's a certain answer I'm looking for. If somebody says the government's too small, I check off their box and I say, thank you very much. Have a nice day. In this case, only one person. I was there for an hour doing the exit poll and in one hour talking to, uh, let's see, a, a good 20, almost, yeah, tw about 20 people gave me responses uh, to this. I guess, well, more, I, I would say more like 30 people gave me responses, but 10 of the responses or nine or 10 responses were like not within the options that I gave them basically. Mm -hmm. So I don't really count them. Um, and then there was probably another seven people that refused to uh, to talk to me or wouldn't or didn't have time. Uh, so so only one person said that the government was too small. So that's a good thing, right? That's a good sign. You'd expect that if it were indeed all status going out to vote, that we'd hear more people saying that the government was too small, that we needed more of it. Um, I was actually surprised that just right that the you know was it too big, too small, or just the right size? Just right won today with ten votes 10 people saying that it was just right right and then eight people said that the government was too big so a solid second place for government is too big in Keene's municipal election Keene, the leftist town of uh new hampshire with one of the highest tax rates uh, i would say there's you know there's a good amount of people out there who agree with us conan but as you've pointed out correctly most of them don't come out to vote most of them aren't interested. There were even people who were there picking up their kids from the rec center. They were there. They could have gone in to vote, but they were like, oh, I'm, you know, I've got to take my kids somewhere. I'm you know, picking up my kid from the rec center. We got to go to a doctor's appointment right. or whatever. And so they don't, uh, they don't even take the time that it, that it takes to go in there. So that's one of the challenges that, that we have here is motivating the people who do agree with us to actually come out and do something about it. They, they do exist. You know, if Keene is a, a small city of 25,000, about 25, 23 to 25,000 people, and only 1,000 people voted, and we don't have the totals yet, but it looks like maybe, let's say, probably no more than 1,500 people voted today. I would say maybe closer to a to a thousand because the city council race, the the mayor's race, none of them got more than a thousand votes. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so that's one twenty-fifth of the city that is, you know, participating in this. Now, not all of them are of voting age. So let's say one out of 20, one twentieth of the city that's yep. participating. Deciding in this. for the entire community, just a small yep. little fingernail portion of the community doing all the deciding for everybody. So this is where the Free State Project, the idea of moving liberty-minded people to the same geographic area can really have an impact. Just one of the ways. No way. Is that a real bullet necklace? No, it's a 9mm bullet necklace with matching earrings, you'll notice. Those are awesome. Where'd you get them? Dave found them at PatriotNecklace.com. Wow. They have a variety of calibers and necklaces and earrings and keychains. PatriotNecklace.com? PatriotNecklace.com. Your choice of caliber bullet includes a rugged American-made stainless steel dog tag chain. A percentage of every sale goes to military and service-related charities. And get a discount by entering GCN at checkout. Show your patriotism and support our troops with a bullet necklace from PatriotNecklace.com. By now you know that wireless technology like cell phones do in fact pose dangers to the health and privacy of everyone. Blockit Pocket's wide range of products are unmatched in providing the protection you deserve. No scare tactics, just common sense. BlockitPocket.com offers quality American-made options to alleviate and eliminate these invisible dangers. Learn more at BlockitPocket.com or call 888-315-9618. BlockitPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Free Press Publications is an independent, alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary on the website fpp.cc, as well as a daily five-minute newscast, FPP Radio News, and weekly news, views, and commentary in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com, and the monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc. As in Creative Commons. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof. I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on joined the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. You can help by joining the AMP program for just $5 a month at amp.freetalklive.com and getting perks. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at facebook.lrn.fm. That's facebook.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live, and you can join us here, should you wish. Our toll-free number 
is 855-450 free that's 855-450-3733 and we've got skype as well at skype username lrn Dot fm obviously this being a uh, internationally syndicated talk radio program we're not going to dig into any minutia of the the local election results i just wanted to talk about it briefly because you and i conan we're actually running and you beat me in vote total so congratulations to you uh having been here for only three years you put up some signs this time around for your election was this the first time you ran for city council i believe i ran uh, earlier on, maybe the first year I was here. Really? But okay. you're saying this is, it's it's a national program, and yeah. we're talking about something that is going on in our area, but right. this is not, it's not just our area. We're t- that's why Apathy we're not, that, happens that, everywhere. That's why we're not going to get into the actual numbers, right. but I mean, this is happening everywhere. You have libertarians... Uh, who you don't are, have who as are, many libertarians running anywhere else besides in New Hampshire. We talked. We talked to some guy last week, the, a Canadian, who was talking yeah. about his his run and you know the fact that in he his numbers were very similar to uh, the U.S. numbers, like three less than three percent. Um, and so this is going on everywhere. It's but like you said, you know, it will never work. We are never going to get elected, Ian. Now, what do you mean by that? Unless we get the numbers here that support us. Well, right. Yeah. I mean, that's going to happen, I think, over time. Whether it's us or another libertarian, somebody, I think, is going to win eventually. And actually, the night is not over yet, Conan, because there was another strategy that went on here today where it was a write-in strategy, Mm -hmm. where the idea was there's these lesser seats. So we were seeking city council seats. Vote moderators and stuff. Yeah, like voting selectmen, voting moderator, supervisor of the checklist, all the crap that nobody really wants to run for. Uh, so the idea was to to do some write-in votes there and see if we can get some folks. And there were actually there was actually one free stater whose name is Keith who was who was actually on the ballot for one of these lesser seats. So it'll be interesting to see how how he did. Now it's just a primary, but uh, the more people that we can throw at the process, the better we the better off we are. The more people that can come here and participate, the better off we are. And Keene's the tough zone, right? Like Keene in New, of all of New Hampshire. Keene is one of the hardest places to win an election because it's one of the more statist towns in New Hampshire, mm-hmm. uh, first and foremost. When when I moved here, I knew that about Keene. I knew that it was a challenge of a place to live. You've got, if you think about it, Keene's in the southwest corner of the state. It's as close. It's closer to uh, New York, Vermont, and Massachusetts <laughs> than any other city in New Hampshire. So, and it's also got a college in it. So, you know, you get all the status from the college, you get all the status from around the uh, the surrounding areas. And uh, and that's why Keene has like the second highest tax rate out of all of, uh, of the state of New Hampshire. Yeah, I don't know that, uh, I think the system is going to collapse before we get elected. You think yeah, so? I think so. Which might be a good thing as well. You think the systems in, in New Hampshire is going to collapse? I no, I uh, the big cities are what gonna are gonna hurt the most. I think the system is going to collapse, but it's you mean we, like the national level system is going to collapse, like the U.S. dollar, the federal government, that kind of thing. Yeah, but I think that we well, are great. we are far enough out in the country that we will be uh, protected from some of the uh, the rioting uh, or whatever. Yeah, that's going to be there's going to be a lot of car flipping. And mm-hmm. there are a lot of people who, when the, when the money runs out and, you know, the money that they have become dependent on is not there any longer, there's going to be a lot of very upset people. I don't know, Conan. And they I, flip cars over pumpkins here in Keene, New Hampshire. I didn't say it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> I didn't say there was a, a whole crap load of, uh, pol- of the uh, government employees here in our area that are going to be out of money. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, educated people. And that's the worst kind of car flipping when it comes from a, oh, yeah. a teacher hmm. flipping the car. Uh, instead of some, you know, you're used to some punk kid who's mad that his football team lost or whatever. But it's worse whenever, you know, educated family members or what not come out and or they're members of a union and they're throwing bottles through your Uber car because, you know, you're taking their jobs away from them. So and that's and it's going to happen. Uh, it's just history. History tells me that it's going to happen. And the only thing that we can really do is to try to sur- surround ourselves with people, like-minded people who yep. are going to survive the the blast. So, and, I, and I think we are far enough out in the country, and there are enough libertarian types here, and they might be more democratic leaning, more left leaning, right. but they are. This is a very very strong libertarian leaning here in New Hampshire. I think we were number two on that last little list that uh, came out just recently. Which list? The top fifty states? Top libertarian states in the in the uh, union. Boy, I haven't. I don't know if I saw that one. The Mercatus Center, of course, ranks states based on freedom. Yeah, overall we, we, freedom. We, we talk about that one a lot. This There's is number this four. Is, this is a new list. One. I'll find it on the next okay. break, and we can talk about that. But 
Our toll-free um, number, if you want to join us here tonight, 855-450-FREE. But put things in perspective for a moment. Yeah, you because know, there's some people out there who are like, "Oh, you free staters, you know, you guys aren't doing anything up there." Well, wait a minute. Yeah, we are. There's a lot happening here. There's there's more happening here than anywhere else. How many libertarians were on your political ballot in your municipal election last time? How many of them? Because I know where I come from in Sarasota, Florida, zero libertarians were running on the municipal election ballot. Mm -hmm. There were. Every now and then there'd be like one or two in the state elections, like for running for state rep or whatever. Out here, we had three uh, out and out, like three hosts of the show, including Johnson. Uh, Johnson, you and myself, we're all running for state, uh, not for state, but we're all running for city council here in Keene. So you got three principled, liberty-minded people. And now what Johnson was doing was like a, a dark horse run where he wasn't even... Uh, promoting himself. He didn't even answer. He was one of two candidates who didn't even answer the questionnaire from the, the newspaper. And he wanted to see what kind of vote total he would get uh, by doing that. And he actually got last place. So I think that's actually an indicator that it is better to just come out with what you believe. You know, you and I, Conan, we wear our beliefs on our sleeves and we answered those questions from the local newspaper, honestly. Oh, and, it was. And with, if, you, if you read those, it's black and white. Yeah. You've, you've got the... The, the 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 political response, the, the the tactful political response, and you've got these two knuckleheads who are talking about you know like individual rights and stuff and like you you know taxation is theft, you know right which is which is what we believe. I mean, it, it, uh, and when you when you wrap it all up in a nice little picture, but it's black and white compared to the other responses where they're all like, we've got to do this to protect our own people. The government needs to do this. Yeah, this is what yeah. government is supposed to do. It's supposed to take care of the people. Now, there are some of the people who are running that were more fiscally concerned with uh, with the government's overspending and the taxes. And so there are certainly some choices that are oh, less they always evil. say they're they're yeah. they're concerned with the high tax rate. But, but do when they, they get but, elected, but when the yeah. budget comes along, do they ever uh, do they ever vote or do For they a have, smaller budget? No, no, never. Yeah. So they're they're full of it. They're just politicians, yeah. and yeah. and that's the big difference between you and me. We're not politicians. We're not and, pandering. And yeah. well, we're paying for it in, in our in our. But numbers. we did better than Johnson did, who did not even answer the questions. He made no attempt whatsoever to communicate his beliefs. He got last place, and we got three. You got four times his vote total. I got three times, roughly three times his his vote total, and we you know got the word out about liberty. And to me, that's what the real value is. Or two dollars. It's to two dollars. So, what's it cost to run in your local city election where you live? Honestly, I don't know what it costs where I come from, but I suspect it was more than two dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's you know it's incredibly accessible. The political system in New Hampshire is so it's such a small field. It's such a uh, a small a fish bowl, if you will. You can be the big fish in the small pond in New Hampshire relatively easily here. And especially if you talk about in smaller towns, a lot of places, there's not even anyone who challenges the incumbents. Daryl Perry, our Thursday night co-host, looked at some of the numbers from a state rep election here in New Hampshire. And he told me that 40, I think it was 45 percent of the races didn't even have a challenger. There was no one who challenged the incumbent. Mm -hmm. No one. And that is a huge opportunity. Just if nothing else. To fill those races with libertarians you know, running as Republicans and Democrats, because it, it's a crap, crappy third-party system here. But to fill those races with liberty-minded people who can talk about the ideas of freedom, even if they have no chance of winning at that moment, it still builds the name recognition. It still gets the ideas of liberty out there. And at the very minimum, it gives some competition to these incumbents who they can just waltz right into office. Without without having to say anything. Right. At least if you go in Make there with— sweat. At least if you go in there with a different opinion— now they're going to have to they're going to have to defend their 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 platform. They're more likely to be willing to show up at a at a, a debate if there's a co a competitor. They're going to have to spend money. They're going to like they're going to feel like they have to spend money. They're going to, you know, put mailers out there, buy campaign signs. They actually have to campaign if all you do is throw your name into the mm -hmm. into the hat. Yeah, make them work for it. Toll-free number tonight 855-450 free. If you want to share your thoughts and comments, you're welcome to do so. This is Free Talk Live. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? 
If you support freedom in the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. If worse comes to worst, will you be prepared? You don't have to be a survivalist to prepare for the unexpected. Storing necessary supplies like food, water, and emergency equipment is simply taking responsibility for ourselves and our families when it counts the most. StrategicShelters.com offers emergency supplies and a secure way to store them and provides protection for loved ones in the event of an extreme natural or man-made disaster. To find out more, visit StrategicShelters.com. A revolution in body protection has arrived only at FortressSurvivalLLC.com. Introducing the revolutionary patented Level 3 Bulletproof Vest. 100% Kevlar, 100% American made. Concealable, fully adjustable, and the lowest price on the market. Adult size normally $289.99, now just $250. Kid size normally $239.99, now just $200. Get affordable protection with a Level 3A Bulletproof Vest from FortressSurvivalLLC.com. For thou art my rock in my fortress. Psalm 31.3. Turn on the news and you'll hear stories of natural disasters, political unrest, and financial crisis. In times of uncertainty, how will you take care of your family's most basic needs? Food Insurance, America's most trusted provider of freeze-dried emergency food, has solutions that fit your family's needs and budget. Our meals are delicious, nutritious, and come with a guaranteed 25-year shelf life. For a limited time, we are sending a free freeze-dried meal to all listeners of this program. Go to foodinsurance.com and request your free meal today. That's foodinsurance.com. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free, at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it. Use it. Spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Yeah! Free Talk Live. Dial toll-free. Join us here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, it's Ian. And Conan. And uh, if you care about privacy on the internet, you need ProXPN. It's a virtual private network. They encrypt your online data before it reaches your internet service provider. And that means that your ISP will no longer know what you're doing with their internet connection. Once you start using ProXPN, you can do that at ProXPN.com. Also, we've got the best deal thus far we've been advertising pro xpn for a while now on free talk live and we've had a pretty good deal before but we've got a better deal for you but it's only available to you if you pay with bitcoin now pro xpn does it right they offer open vpn that's the gold standard of network encryption they've got apps for windows mac ios android and even linux support so it's super easy to get started at proxpn.com 
Now, the old deal was 50% off the regular monthly price if you bought the annual account, which is pretty darn good, 50% off. You can still get that deal if you're somebody who doesn't have Bitcoin. If you're just going to pay with your credit card, for instance, use code FTL50. That's still good. That code's still golden. You know, it's going to get you a great discount. And that's good, by the way, for the lifetime of your account. So that's code FTL50. But if you have Bitcoin, you can then go to proxpn.com slash amp. ProXPN.com slash AMP, like our Advertise, Market, and Promote program on Free Talk Live. Then, when you pay with Bitcoin, you get two years of ProXPN for less than $50 worth of Bitcoin. $49.95 worth of Bitcoin. And $5 of that price, uh, price will go to the Free Talk Live AMP program. So, you get a tremendous discount. This is even far cheaper, actually, than the 50% off that we were talking about. But you have to pay with Bitcoin to get that deal. So if you want that deal, go to proxpn.com slash amp and pay for uh, pay for your ProXPN with Bitcoin. Or you can still use code FTL50 if you don't have Bitcoin. So again, proxpn.com slash amp. Help spread the ideas of liberty and take back your privacy all at once. Uh, Conan, we want to talk about Ron Paul? Let's talk about Ron Paul. He's always talking about them bubbles. It's and been a while. Uh, he's been foretelling... Uh, the popping of them, the bursting of them, and uh, he's I think he's got a pretty good track record. He's got a darn good track record on these matters. That, Krug, that Krugman guy? Not, not, so, not much. so much. The U.S., this is from RT, by the way, RT.com. The U.S. 2016 presidential race is mass entertainment orchestrated by the media. Three-time presidential candidate and former Congressman Ron Paul told RT, as he discussed frontrunner Donald Trump, the government, and the bubble-making U.S. economy. Paul told RT's Amira David, uh, that the billionaire presidential hopeful Trump, who earlier vowed to build a massive border wall and end birthright citizenship for babies born to undocumented immigrants, is nothing but an authoritarian. Here's a quote from Ron Paul. Quote, he is an authoritarian and he brags about it. I'm the boss. I tell people what to do. The government happens to be a little different than that. The only thing that you want to do if you believe in the market is you want to get rid of the government. But he's talking about having strong taxes on imports. He wants to punish people. He's the boss. So I think he'd be very dangerous to the economy. He gets a lot of attention right now, but he's an authoritarian, says Ron Paul. He wants to run people's lives and run the world and run the economy because that's the way he lives his life. On occasion, he comes up with the correct idea, but an authoritarian is the opposite of libertarian. A libertarian wants to release creative energy to the individuals. We want to get government out of our lives, out of the economy, and out of all these places around the world. It's quite a bit different from the way an authoritarian would approach our problems. And you know the worst part about all this, so we're talking about local elections, but this yeah. crap is about to take place on a national level, and the two guys that are getting all of the attention, both authoritarians— they're both telling it like it is. Bernie they're, they're, Sanders, they're you mean, both, and Donald both, Trump? Yeah, they're both telling their sides of the equation, their, their sides of the bird, mm -hmm. their wings of the bird, what they want to hear. And it's the worst part. They're not even hiding anywhere. They're not even They're not even talking polit politically. They're, they're just coming right out, out and out saying there. it. Trump is like, yeah, I'll send all them immigrants back across the border. And, Grant, and Bernie's like, yeah, I'll get you all this free stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's horrible that people are just, they're just sucking it up. They're loving it. What's new, though, really? I mean, they're. I guess what you're saying is they're more open now than they've been in yeah, the past. Yeah, they're not even trying to hide it. They're not even trying to. They're not speaking politically. They're just saying, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you. The U.S. economy says RT is set to grow 0.9% in the third quarter after bigger than expected widening of the trade gap for goods in August, according to the Atlanta Federal Reserve's G GDP now. This appeared to be a much slower rate than the regional Fed's prior estimate of 1.8%. Last week, said the Atlanta Fed. Paul said about that, it's just the beginning of a downturn. Nothing's really happened yet. Everything is misdirected because of the price of money. There are bubbles every place. You have a stock market bubble. You have still bubble making in housing. It's when, your education bubble, your, your yeah, higher, higher education bubble. He mentions that next. Uh, he says when you see houses selling for $500 million, and you have a bubble in student loans. And that one's a huge one. We were looking at that the other uh, few days back. On Free Talk Live, the bubbles are all over the place, he says. This is the problem, and I don't see an easy way out. I think the markets are going to go down a lot more when you realize how serious this is. And actually, we're doing better than the rest of the world, but we're in trouble, too, because the world has never had a situation like this, where a whole world endorsed a paper currency and had a pyramiding of debt around the world by the reserve currency, which is the dollar. 
It's the biggest bubble ever. So it's going it's going to be the biggest crash ever, but it remains to be seen exactly when that's going to hit. It's going to happen within our lifetimes. I'm well, sure I'm sure of it. You know, there of course are always people predicting that it's right around the corner and the Federal Reserve seems to have its ways of stretching it out, right? Like they keep doing things to uh, prevent the, prevent the end from from coming. And I imagine they've still got a few tricks up their sleeve. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, that's fine. If it takes longer, that's good because it gives you time to prepare yourself for it. And I'm no financial expert or anything like that, but I know one thing's for sure. I don't want to keep all of my value in dollars because if and when things do go bad with the dollar, uh, you know, to the point of no turning back, then you're not going to want to be scrambling like the people in Greece were. You know, when the folks in Greece were ready to get to the banks and get their money out, it was too late. Then it was bank holiday time, and you can't go to the banks. Yeah, then it's withdrawal 60 a week or whatever it was. 60 euro per day, I think it was restricted mm. to, from uh, from the ATM machines. But the banks were closed. You couldn't go and actually pull out any decent amount of money. So you got to pre- prepare for that now. Like So if people believe that you do, Conan, that this is coming, uh, that it is inevitable, then now's the time to start looking at gold, silver, Bitcoin. I think these are three useful alternative currencies and where you live too that's true getting out of the city just just watch a zombie apocalypse movie <laughs> where do you where do you not want to be when the zombies right pop out right because if the government can't pay its bills they're certainly not going to be paying for your food or yeah. whatever else it is and there, there was a story recently in illinois they can't even pay their power bill at the state house yeah, if you don't have enough yard to grow some tomatoes or raise some chickens, then you're in the wrong place when this, if if and when this happens, and I'm pretty sure that it will happen soon, and uh, you just don't want to be there. Ron further uh, pointed out that the source of the trouble is the Federal Reserve System, which simply cannot work in a real market economy. Quote, in a true free market economy, you have to have people work, use what they need to live on, and then save money, and that dictates interest rates and tells businessmen what they should do. Well, that isn't the way it works anymore. The so-called capital comes from the Fed, and they create it out of thin air. It's a credit card. It just keeps getting stacked on top of. So everything's a mistake, and everything's going to be volatile. You can do this for a while when the country is very, very wealthy and a currency is very, very strong. But eventually, people mistrust the government. They don't pay interest. They have a huge amount of principal to pay, and corporations are deeply in debt. They borrow a lot of money practically for free, and they buy up their stocks. It's a mess. It's artificial. It has nothing to do with freedom, has nothing to do with free markets, and the sooner we realize this, the sooner we'll get rid of central economic planning and especially look into the serious problems we get from the Federal Reserve System. But I think, as you pointed out, Conan, before any of those serious inquiries actually ever happen, it's all going to come crashing down. And then, and then if, like I said, if you look at the history books, uh, we're going to probably have a savior who's going to come down. Swoops, Another political savior. Come swooping down out of the clouds. is going to save us all from... Uh, another FDR, so to speak. I'm thinking another Hitler. Oh. I'm thinking another Stalin. Oh, my. You know, the guys that, that uh, you know, when it's... Re- that when could it's, be Donald Trump. I, I believe that Donald Trump has a lot has has a lot of similarities to Hitler. Mm. When the whole just look at look look at Hitler's campaign when he came into into power, the things he was saying, you know, we need to sh- we need to ship all those Jews out of the out of the state. Mm. They're they're just sucking us down. They're sucking down our uh, general welfare. Uh, you know, he and he Same was saying and, and a lot of free. There were a lot of free uh, options that were he now was, it's he was the Mexicans the table. or the immigrants, right? Yeah, it's it's not not the a whole lot. He, he was telling the people what they wanted to hear. Just like Trump. Check out Conan. He's got a show. It's called Black Sheep Rising. You can go to blacksheeprising.org. It's a monthly video show, but also available in podcasts, so audio form over Correct. at blacksheeprising.org. You guys are going to be doing a live show at the uh, upcoming Keenvention. Correct. At the end of this month. You can go to keenvention.info to learn more about that and grab your tickets for just 60 bucks for the whole weekend of October 30th through November 1st. Meanwhile, we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Money, power, and respect are all yours at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit did your nerves spike. You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. 
Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at creditsuccesssecretsrevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to creditsuccesssecretsrevealed.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherock.org today to get started. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. The latest edition of Rebel Love Show is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, October 6, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.71 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,139 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $244. Antiwar.com reports another day of intense fighting was reported in the central Mari province of Yemen on Monday as pro-Saudi forces attacked Shiite Houthi territory, aiming to open up a route into the capital city of Sana'a. At least 55 fighters on both sides were killed and another 100 were wounded. The results of the fighting were, as is so often the case, a matter of dispute between the two factions, with the pro-Saudi side claiming mass surrenders by Houthis and small territorial gains, while the Houthis denied this and reported repelling the attack and killing dozens of mercenaries. The pro-Saudi side in this fight includes tribal factions along with Saudi and United Arab Emirate ground troops, while the Houthis are backed by the remnants of the Yemen military. The two sides have been fighting over Marib for weeks despite repeated predictions from Saudi officials that the province and the rest of the country would be liberated in short order. The Houthis have controlled Sana'a for over a year and six months into the Saudi war, their control only extends from Aden along the southern coast. Al-Qaeda in the Arabian Peninsula has capitalized on the war as well, seizing Mukalla and some of the nearby areas. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports California Governor Jerry Brown on Monday said he had signed legislation to make it legal for terminally ill patients to end their lives with the assistance of a physician. In Brown signing the law, California became the fifth state to permit assisted suicide. Specifically, the law releases physicians from liability for prescribing lethal doses of drugs for patients who want to 